that Breitbart had a black crime tab. Like you would go on the website and click black crime and it would show up all of the black crimes that were occurring. Ben Shapiro used to write for Breitbart at the time when it had the black crime tab, by the way. He left only because they became too anti-Semitic. As soon as I find out, you'll One, know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Okay, here we go. I've wondered for a very long time how Joe Rogan, this guy who describes himself as a professional fool, went from hosting a game show where he eats cockroaches with contestants to becoming the host of perhaps the most popular podcast on earth. And you're going, no, and that's how you die. Now listen, I am not a Joe Rogan listener. Well, at least I wasn't before this story. But by now, I am. Because by now, me and my team have listened to a lot what? of Joe Rogan. If you didn't know whether or not people agree with you or disagree with you, I think that'd probably be better overall. I'm sorry. Is Johnny definitely not affiliated with the CIA, the World Economic Forum, or NATO Harris? Doing a pro Joe Rogan video, I'm going to lose my fucking mind. How many videos did this guy talk about missing from me? There's no way he's doing a pro Joe Rogan video. He's made like... First of all, he's a Vox guy, a former Vox.com guy. That's number one. Number two, he's spent an insane amount of time. Refresh. He changed the title. Wait, what? Really? Well, hey, that's right. Blame. Bro, he refreshed the title today. Earlier today, I said I was going to watch this. And he refreshed the title. Wait, what the fuck's going on? Okay, is he in here? Johnny, are you in here? Be honest. Bro, what the fuck? Johnny Harris is in my walls, dude. Johnny, get out of my walls. Because by now, me and my team have listened fuck! to a lot of Joe Rogan. If you didn't know whether or not people agree with Where you or disagree he? with you, I think that'd probably be better overall for people. I wanted to understand where this guy came from, what his deal is, what does he say during these like two to three hour long episodes that are listened to by millions of people? Because for better or worse, he is influencing a lot of people. So let me show you how an average Joe like Rogan can sit around getting high, talking to his friends, and somehow get millions of people to tune in. Now, I know that talking about Joe Rogan can cause some controversy. But at the end of that round, he was yeah. deep oh. It's weird Before to we get into it, him. let's thank today's sponsor. The internet is becoming kind of a dangerous place. Like, people on the internet who want to do bad things and steal for- Wait, channel, he is not- Wait, my man- I'm so confused. This video has been up already for six days too, untouched. Yeah, on the sixth day, when I finally get to it, he changed the title. Um, bro, Johnny Harris is such a fucking lib. Wait, he's such a lib. What is going on? It, like, as, a, as the premier liberal, as a premier liberal, like, he's supposed to fucking hate Joe Rogan, right? Like, there's no way he's going to turn around and be like, this guy who is a misinformation agent is actually fucking awesome. This guy who has done so much to almost single-handedly develop the far right's prominence online is actually sick because a lot of people watch him, and here's why. It also gets you in on an extra extended subscription to NordVPN. You get the two-year plan plus four yeah, I'm extra showing months. you the ad. Links in the description. Link. Thank you, NordVPN, for sponsoring today's video. Let's get back to Joe Rogan. Okay, so it's 1987, and here is a 20-year-old Joe Rogan taking a guy down with a spinning back kick at a Taekwondo competition. Always moving to new schools, always dealing with new kids, and I wasn't big, and I didn't know how to fight, and I got picked on, and I didn't like it. So I said, I want to I want to figure out how to fight. And eventually, he got really good at it. I was competing from the time I was 15. I just threw myself into it. That's all I did every day. And then one summer night in 1988, when he was 21, he went to an open mic night at a comedy club in Boston. Your legs are sprawled out on the bed like Bambi trying to walk in a frozen lake and banging your head against the headboard. 
I love it when we make love. His friends goaded him to get up on stage and perform a stand-up set. It must have gone really well because soon after, Rogan moves to LA to make it big in comedy. By the 90s, he was showing up in TV shows as the goofy, lovable, comedic relief. Because the light's better over here. <laughs> Everything's better over here. <laughs> but this sip commie thing wasn't his dream. He loved comedy and fighting. Enter. He sounds so much like my fucking from my foot, my buddies from college. Like it's it's insane. I know like eleven dudes that sound exactly, speak exactly, and sound exactly like that with that same exact fucking accent. Enter UFC Ultimate Fighting Championship. <laughs> Okay, so it's the late 90s, and now Joe Rogan is like a UFC commentator personality, interviewing fighters backstage. This is actual footage of his first appearance. They are anticipating a wipeout in the finals. Yeah! And I mean, this guy's good. Like, he's got such a magnetic personality, even back then. By the time he was in his 30s, it was the 2000s, and Joe had proven to be a talented host and entertainer. And he was chosen to host a show. <laughs> Dude, chatters that aren't you old enough to go to college with Joe Rogan? Yeah, dog, I'm 48 years old. <laughs> yeah, show you got where me. contestants would be pushed to their limits to test their fear. It was a show aptly named Fear Factor. Fear Factor. I mean, I remember this from my childhood. The show had like a huge impact on our media culture. I think it kind of laid the foundation for sensational reality TV. It was disgusting and sometimes just downright horrifying. But honestly, it was brilliant because it was impossible to look away. Yes! Sherry, relax. Relax, Sherry. Sherry, relax. Ah! So Fear Factor was like the big leveling up for Joe Rogan. You know what? Again, very fortunate. It was a great gig, plenty of money, and it was all good. And it definitely helped my stand up because it gave me Dude, fucking... A lot of this is old, Joe. I remember him talking about this shit where he would talk about how luck played such a big role in every aspect of his life that he was so appreciative and he was so fortunate and that he understood what it was like and how hard it was for someone to make it out the mud, for someone to come from a background like his. It's funny because, like, Maybe new Hasanabi heads don't know this, but, like, I used to be a big-ass fan of Joe Rogan. I used to talk about how I was a big-ass fan of Joe Rogan way back in the day. Back in the day. Obviously, not when I was on Twitch. By that point, he had already completely become, like, a right-wing media monster. But I've, I have a photo with him. I've hung out with him. He probably doesn't remember. He used to be a fan of the Young Turks and Anna Kasparian, personally. Anna and I went to watch him uh, do stand-up at, uh, at the improv. We hung out for three hours after. This was, like, many, many years ago. And I thought it was so sick, like, that I was talking to this guy whose podcast I was listening to, who I actually was very fond of, not necessarily because of his podcast, but because I always thought, like, this guy... This guy was, um, like, he was free. Like, he, he had made so much money off of Hollywood shit, but he was entering a totally new realm in online content creation, which I was a part of as well at that point, right? As a, as a young person who wanted to become a content creator. I... I would look at him as like the the idol, you know what I mean? I would look at him as like the the exact the right thing to do. Get the money, sure, but then take that and create your own thing where you have pure editorial freedom. Young cap bro was like 29 at this point. No, when I was when I'm talking about with Joe Rogan I was like 24. He was the blueprint exactly. And it's really interesting to think of because I saw this guy who was doing podcasting, which was like not as popular back then. It was not as like 
broadly uh, welcomed, received. The reception was nowhere near the same. Okay. And I thought, wow, here's a guy who, uh, you know, had every opportunity to continue on Hollywood and yet turned around and made his own thing online, had editorial freedom, and was still making money, but also he had influence that he had translated on to a product that was entirely his own. And I thought that was incredible. I, I, wanted to, I wanted to do exactly that. Not like a podcast or whatever, but I wanted to do something where I had that level of financial and editorial freedom, which is ironic because I think I have achieved that. But somewhere along the way, Joe Rogan, during the Gamergate era, started building up right-wing content creators that he was fascinated by, okay? Joe Rogan was the first place that uh, gave a tremendous amount of prominence to Milo Yiannopoulos, for example. I remember telling people at the Young Turks, Jenk included, to look out for this Milo guy, that he was going to be a big fucking name and was already becoming a big name in the far-right circles he was one of the first people that had Milo Yiannopoulos on on a major major uh you know a, a major influence or a major outlet basically at the time and then now we look back at Milo Yiannopoulos and we're like yeah what a joke what a clown but like you don't remember if you were there at the time he was like impossible to avoid everyone fucking talked about Milo Yiannopoulos um, and he was a gigantic piece of shit back then, it, and not really much has changed. It's just that he got canceled uh, by the right, ironically, due to, I think, something that he said on the Joe Rogan podcast, as a matter of fact. So, um, he was insanely popular in the 2015 era. He was like a bad boy, you know what I mean? And, and you know, you could be gay and pro-Trump and, like, uh, you know, dress up in these crazy ways and all this shit. Um... Sargon of Akkad was on Joe Rogan. Jordan Peterson was gaining a lot of prominence. Um, Bill Maher also put up Milo Yiannopoulos. Bill Maher also did that. Um, but Joe Rogan had, like, Stefan Molnier on. An out-and-about white supremacist. I, I think he might have actually deleted that episode, if I'm not mistaken. Because, like, he is just straight up a, you know... Uh, openly uh, uh, agitating, uh, you know, anti-Semitic, white nationalist piece of shit. Now, Matt Walsh, he's had on recently. I'm saying, like, this is in the beginning, where he was like, oh, I'm just a centrist, I'm just a centrist. He still pulls that shit, but it doesn't matter. Now we know, like, he said he would vote for Ron DeSantis and shit like that. So, um, I'm talking, like, back in 2015, 2014 even, when he started having, when he started basically being the beginning of the alt-right pipeline. Like, he was, as a singular force, the person with the most mainstream appeal, with the most popular fucking podcast, constantly pumping these, like, weird far-right figures that were sometimes marginal and irrelevant, that became relevant afterwards, or, or were, you know relatively relevant and he just had them on and offered them their platform yeah, at his peak milo was comparable to tate if you ignore the arrest spike yeah and he was rich back then so don't say now that he's rich he does not want to pay taxes he was very fucking rich back then You know, I, I loved it. He would constantly talk about buddies of his even back then. There were certain issues. Atheist YouTube was huge in the All Right Pipeline. Absolutely. This was this was the other part. There was a big breakaway, a breakoff point that permanently solidified a lot of the atheist YouTubers that actually went in one direction, which was uh, leftism, and atheist YouTubers that went into the full-blown reactionary anti-Obama train. Atheist YouTube pre-Obama was, you know, in its, in its uh, inception of YouTube, basically, when it first started, 
Um, YouTube used to be a place where a lot of people would shit on. Um, YouTube used to be a place where a lot of people would shit on like former George W. Bush goofs and gaffes, right? 2007, I think, is when it first started. Like the OG YouTubers that were atheists were very much like, fuck the anti-science stuff that the Republican right is pushing for. Fuck the... Uh, uh, fuck the anti-stem cell research from the Bush administration. This was after the Bush administration, but still, like, they were, they were, like, those atheists back then, and I know all this because, like, I'm literally related to Jank, and, like, I'm familiar with, like, Air America and all of these, like, super old-school uh, liberal outlets and, and the liberal content creation uh, space, independent content creation space. So, there was a lot of that. And then atheists under the Obama administration turned around and were like, well, we're anti-everything, we're anti-religion, and we're certainly anti-Islam, but Islam seems to be a way more present, ever-present danger to America and the rest of the world, actually. So we're only going to talk about Islam. And they slowly but surely, through the likes of Sam Harris and others, became like gigantic Islamophobes who then would always defend their Islamophobic perspectives under the guise of rationality. Like, this is la rational, this is logic, this is reason. You should be afraid of Muslims. What little did they know was that a lot of those fucking guys were basically just churning out State Department propaganda. They didn't realize it at the time, and they probably still don't realize it. Many of them actually turned around and maybe offered a little bit of restitution for that. They de-radicalized a little bit. But a lot of them, at the time were straight up trying to criticize Obama from, quote-unquote, the left, the atheist left, by saying Obama is a Muslim apologist. Sam Harris, Christopher Hitchens, a lot of these people uh, either got second career revitalizations or rose to prominence at that time. Okay? One big turning point in, like, the online leftist spaces, like a lot of these supposedly progressive atheists, uh, became totally fucking right wing and uh and and out of control was the Sam Harris Jink Uyghur debate. It was a 3-hour debate. It was one of the first ever like 3-hour fucking debates on on a political subject matter that got that level of popularity. If people remember that, I don't know, if you might be too fucking old. If you remember that, you probably are uh, or were a piece of shit. Let's be real. And you are not anymore, so that's great. Thank you for coming back to, like, uh, sanity. But that debate for the online circles was, was basically the, the cutoff point. After that, a lot of these, like, atheist guys who were like, fuck Islam, a lot of these Islamophobic atheist guys, the r slash Reddit a uh, atheist Andes, r slash atheism Andes, they became increasingly more reactionary, especially alongside Gamergate, misogynistic. Some of them adopted uh, racist uh, values as well. Okay? Transphobia and the like. Now, since then, even those including Sam Harris, for example, have kind of shifted their perspective in the Trump era. A lot of those guys were like, okay, maybe we were like a little too crazy about certain things. I don't think Sam Harris has ever apologized for uh, hating Muslims and being a psychopath, uh, being an Islamophobic piece of shit. Sam Harris is not anti-Muslim, nor was Hitchens. Yeah, 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 you're right, brother. He was operating on a different playing field that our ape-like Muslim on brains cannot comprehend, myself included. Yeah, thank you. Um, some of those guys didn't make that turn back to liberalism. It's because they found it easier to sell out to the anti-Islam people, less resistance to that in the U.S., and you can get dumbass races on board to help spread it. I was a fan of Sam Harris, like, in 2004, and then started to dislike him when he went only anti-Islam. Yeah. Didn't Sam Harris recently deny that George Floyd was murdered? No, I don't think he did that. Sam Harris is, has been, like, very much a, a unbearable fucking lib again for, like, the past four years, I think. He has distanced himself from the rest of the intellectual dark web, which made up, uh, which was comprised of figures such as Joseph Robinette Rogan, 
Samuel Jebediah Harris, uh, Ben Shapiro, Jordan Peterson, the Weinstein brothers, who are fucking irrelevant anti-vaxxer freaks now. These were all the guys that were uh, that that comprised the 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 intellectual dark web. A famous article written by Barry Weiss, formerly of the New York Times. Dave Rubin was a part of the intellectual dark web as well. Yes. You might have noticed that none of these motherfuckers are intellectuals. Okay? So, they're all charlatans for the most part. But yeah, the Trump plus anti-vax shit made Trump, uh, uh, Trump, uh, Sam Harris full-blown snap back to liberalism. I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of like history, online history from a person who experienced it and got death threats uh, and, and mass harassment campaigns from every different aspect of the every dark corner of the interweb. Uh, so, you know, I've gotten it. I've gotten it from all ends. The atheists the, the, that say, you know, I'm uh, too much of a Muslim defender uh, to the white supremacists who say I uh, allow too much uh, for black people. Like I allow, I, I let black people get away with too much crime. So I've gotten through all of that. And I was far more alone back then. I do not feel as alone now. I have a wonderful community, a massive, sizable community. But uh, back then, it certainly felt much, much lonelier. Let's continue. You money too. It gave mm -hmm. me the, the ability to not worry about like having money in the bank. And by the end of the early 2000s, Joe had a lot of experience. He was an entertainer. He was a comedian. He was a host. He was an actor. He had built a hefty network of interesting people. He was charismatic and tough and funny and hardworking. All of the ingredients he needed for his next move. Podcasting. On Christmas Eve 2009, Joe and one of his comedian friends recorded a two-hour podcast. It was a so sprawling Brian, conversation yeah. covering everything from conspiracy theories to game addiction to Bob sensory Parker deprivation. Even know Brian it was honestly a good omen for what this show would become. He called his podcast the Joe Rogan Experience. Kind of a nod to Jimi Hendrix. Now remember, in 2009, podcasts weren't really a thing yet. You had a bunch of like sort of radio shows that were making it onto podcasts like This American Life or Planet Money, Stuff You Should Know. But this was all very new at the time. But that changed when people could stream podcasts on demand with their new little internet connected pocket computers. Right from the beginning, Joe Rogan's show was fast, prolific, and consistent, uploading multiple times a week. And by the end of his second year on the show, he had had a bunch of big names as guests. We've done everything wrong. We, these were young male elephants. They're fa they are the fastest moving creatures, I think, in the wild once they get going. Oh. And, uh... Chat. Podcasts absolutely fucking lootly were not a thing in 2009. If you're saying podcasts are a thing in 2009, all you're doing is admitting to everyone in the chat that you are probably the oldest fucking nerd in the room. Come on. Even I at least have the decency to lie and say podcasts became a thing much, much later, and it certainly wasn't a thing in, like, 2013. Come on now. I started listening to podcasts in around... 2012, 2013. That's when I started listening to it. And it certainly, even back then, was not a thing in the public consciousness. Like, people didn't listen to podcasts with the same fucking frequency as they do now, you unbearable nerds. Yeah, WTF with Mark Marin. Old, old, old Hasanabi heads know. My original intro wasn't uh, Welcome to the Hasanabi Broadcast. It was... What the fuck, buddies? What the fuck? I was make fun. I would make fun of Mark Maron. That was my like super, super old uh, intro on my stream. Uh, they hate bright, like bright shirts, which of course we were wearing. Uh, they don't. They're spooked by people holding implements, uh, which of course that's what we were doing. And they particularly don't like being herded by people one, you know, thousandth their weight. <laughs> At the beginning, they were mostly comedians and fighters. I'm thinking about. Tom Cruise and Scientology. Mm. There is a man using every ounce of what Scientology is offering to make himself the best available man that he's capable of being. Yeah. Then you've got Travolta. <laughs> <laughs> but soon, comedians and fighters to a different genre of people. Let's call them thinkers. Workers don't 
have the right to engage in collective bargaining in the United States until the 1930s. That's where that whole idea of the let the market decide falls apart. You would have philosophers on, and politicians, scientists, you name it. The show started to become just a grab bag of any interesting person Joe Rogan Dog. wanted to have a conversation with. Neil deGrasse Tyson. If you don't fucking talk about, like, in the thinkers era, if you don't talk about fucking Milo and the, and the prominent, like, right-wing figures that he not only lend a voice to, but, like, basically mainstream, I'm going to fucking lose my mind. Are you insane? What kind of fucking research are you doing, Johnny? God damn it. There's no way. He has to. He has to talk about it. I believe, I believe Johnny Harris is... Going to do a better job than this. The astrophysicist appeared a few times. You get a multiverse. We didn't pull that out of our ass. That came out of the equations. Soon, it was bigger and bigger names. Elon Musk, Russell Brand, Nick Kroll, Jay okay. Leno, Jordan Peterson. Okay, we passed through that era. We passed through the fucking thinker era without Milo mention. Wiz Khalifa, Dr. Phil, Travis Barker. By the late 2010s, the Joe Rogan experience was reaching around 11 million listeners per episode making it the most popular podcast ever, at least on platforms like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Like, I had never listened to this, but I knew of Joe Rogan because- I did! I did! That's crazy. That's crazy. I did, religiously, as a matter of fact. Holy fuck. Milo ain't mainstream, though. Nobody will care. What are you talking about? Milo was mainstream. Joe Rogan made him mainstream. Milo Yiannopoulos- and, and all of the other fucking people that I mentioned were j incredibly relevant in the online sphere. You guys literally forget. Milo Yiannopoulos wasn't just some fucking random, like, gay guy who went on college campuses and, like, caused riots or whatever. He also wrote for Breitbart. And when he was writing for Breitbart, he very clearly and deliberately factored in Nazi propaganda that he openly admitted to writing in Breitbart a publication that blew up uh, was already like a relatively successful publication, but like certainly blew up after uh, the, the, or during the Trump campaign. Breitbart, where Ben Shapiro also wrote at, at a time when they had a tab called Black Crime. Breitbart, the publication that was owned by Andrew Breitbart, rest in piss, who died on a fucking toilet off of a cocaine overdose, that Breitbart, the publication, okay, politics is downstream from culture, suck my cock, that Breitbart had a black crime tab. Like, you would go on the website and cl click black crime, and it would show up all of the black crimes that were occurring. Ben Shapiro used to write for Breitbart at the time when it had the black crime tab, by the way. He left only because they became too anti-semitic remember that there are a lot of members even in this community especially older members who most likely were stuck in that alt-right pipeline due to the likes of joe rogan and milo Yiannopoulos and many others that were perhaps very successfully brainwashing poisoning the minds of the youth now if we talk about like the real world harm and impact that that had it's marginal. It's not what like got Donald Trump elected or anything like that, even though a lot of those guys did end up working directly with Donald Trump. But, but if you think about all of the, the acts of violence that you see, that you experience, specifically white supremacist acts of violence, a lot of those people were absolutely radicalized due to the likes of Milo Yiannopoulos and that, and that ecosystem. Old heads know you and TYT have been on this for 10 years. Yes. And we've been getting death threats for it for 10 fucking years. We've been hated by those extremely online uh, circles for 10 years. I got motherfuckers in here that have a blood feud with me for the past, like, since 2013. Okay? Like, you think you've been a fan for a long time? Why do people always write, like, random numbers in the chat? Anyway. You, got, you think you've been a fan for a long enough time? I've had haters for twice the amount. Okay? 
Why do you say it was marginal? Because I'm not a believer that like shit that happens online is actually moving the needle in the real world. I just simply believe that uh, a lot of that like online white nationalist, a lot of that online white nationalist uh, shit was mostly just online. Like that's not what got Trump elected. That's not what like shaped Trump's campaign messaging or anything like that. White supremacy is foundational in American societal development. So, uh, of course, for that reason, uh, it, it's it's significantly more uh, it, it's significantly more powerful than just like a couple other fucking dumbasses. I think on aggregate, online moves the needle, but not specific things like a single podcast. Yeah. Be honest, I hated your content on TYT. Being a streamer just suits your strengths much better. You probably have changed your perspective a little bit since then on issues, and you probably agree with me a lot more now on issues than you did back then. Okay? Anyway. Let's continue. Kind of everywhere when you're scrolling. Nah, your TYT shit was rough. You say that, brother, but like we re we give it a rewatch regularly on a lot of the things that I've done on TYT. And my political perspective has absolutely stood the test of time. It is nearly identical to the same political uh, commentary that I engage in now on a daily basis. So much so that I could just like play an old clip. I, I Yes, there's cringe jokes and whatnot. Of course. Of course. But you can see... Chatter does not know that you were known as Woke Bay. Yeah, I hated that. But anyway, I wasn't talking about your ideas. It's about presentation. Yeah, okay. Not the commentary. You just aren't as good as reading off a script as you are on stream. First of all, you're absolutely wrong. I used to be really good at, at reading off of a script. It's just the script that I wrote was very cringe. But a lot of people hated me because they, at the time, were big into Gamergate. Like, this guy at least admits it. There was plenty of people. There are plenty of people in here that absolutely were just like totally captured, captivated by Gamergate. It was a lot of dudes that looked like you, that sounded like you, that were feeding into your personal preconceived biases. It made you feel comfortable. It made you feel like you had a sense of community, a shared purpose, and that's understandable. That's what I've tried to combat my entire fucking career on the, on, in online media, okay? Dog the chatter you just banned. <laughs> I just banned this cat. Why do you always do this? Do what? I thought you said it held up. Why do you always do this? It does hold up. I play my old clips all the time in the chat all the time, and it fucking absolutely holds up. Sure, there are some cringe jokes every now and then, but they absolutely hold up. The ideologies are pretty much the same. The talking points are pretty much the same. The issues are identical because none of them will ever be solved. So that's what I'm saying when I say it held, It holds up. It stands the test of time. That's what I mean. You were weak back then. Couldn't even be the nameless king. Yeah, thank you. I'm a Zoomer. What the fuck is Gamergate? Lamau. Polite chatter. Gamergate is, uh, how do I describe it? It's like, imagine if uh, the Andrew Tate phenomena that you experienced where all of your friends became Andrew Tate fans and started talking exactly like him. Imagine if Andrew Tate was the sweatiest, least washed, most disgusting looking fat slob, neck bearded nerd with possibly a British accent again still. Okay. Quarter pounder. Great example of a person still holds on to that essence, to that energy. Quarter Chicken McPounder uh, is a Gamergate Andy. Uh, it was uh, a, a movement online that uh, was created under the guise of bringing ethics to video game journalism that actually just was about, like, really sending death threats to uh, annoying I'll admit that at least, or sometimes misunderstood female writers of video game uh, news. 
<sighs> That's it. Sometimes they were annoying because they would do contemporary feminist analysis on video games and people thought that they were going to take your treats away. It was just about shitting on women for the most part. Not, not much has changed, really. Now, trans women too, obviously, but I'm saying like, it, it's all the stuff, all of the stuff that you uh, see today, but just way worse but with no counter. But the only counter being like fucking liberal boomers on mainstream media publications trying to make sense of it or not aware of it at all. There was no, there was no, like, uh, it was just a feedback loop. There was no counter to these guys. It was everything that you saw. In the gamer space, all matter of commentary people were just like either center right or far right. This includes some of your favorite content creators who also were captivated by the Gamergate shit. A lot of commentary YouTube uh, pre-2016 were abso-fucking-lutely. Uh, right, like I said, center-right or far-right centrists. Women coming into their little safe space and making it gay and more feminine and more diverse was a threat. It would make it more mainstream. It would make it suck. I think ultimately that was the real reason why there was so much backlash to this kind of thing. Not realizing that like uh, opening up gaming to a larger, broader audience was going to make it also better in many ways. Not realizing that the main problem was, uh, but the main problem with gaming was capitalism and not necessarily progress by allowing fucking female characters to exist or women looking like women in the real world or some shit. Okay? But it was the sweatiest, most awful fucking nerds that were relentless they love doing 4chan edgy groiper memes. Some of those guys literally went from doing memes on 4chan to like actually becoming the meme, becoming like real fucking out and about Nazis. And many of them never grew out of it. Of course, remnants of that mentality still very much exist in some of the sweatiest circles. Uh, and uh, of course, there are newer versions of that. Okay. There are newer versions of that. I very famously called it when Joe Biden became president. One of the first things I said was that this is going to create a space online where we will absolutely go back to like the pre-Trump era of, of online madness, just annoying culture war issues back and forth, mostly just like Gamergate related shit. No more materialism, no more talking about economic issues, just simply... Uh, no more defensive posturing against like possible fascist, uh, you know, like a possible fra uh, proto-fascist government uh, uh, quashing and squashing riots or, or uh, any kind of action with, uh, with, overwhelming, uh, with an overwhelming police presence. When was materialism ever on the ballot? Man, I'm talking about issues of discussion, okay? the fuck are you saying? Yeah, let's vote in dialectical materialism on the ballot. What, if, what do you mean? What the fuck are you talking about? And I was right. We're back into that. We're back in the fold again. We're, we're, we're back to the reactionary uh, online commentary space in many respects. It's still much less popular than it was back then. Um, but, you know, people desperately try to cling on to it. Anyway, let's get back to the Johnny Harris video that avoided all of that harder than a subscriber at the top of the hour avoids a three-minute ad break. Holy shit. Because at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for $5 or free with this Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitter account where you get one free Prime subscription a month. Use it on your favorite broadcaster. Hopefully, that's me. Here's the three-minute ad break now. So one, three on. Thank you for the tank of the subs. ...through any podcast app. So then in 2020, Spotify was like, I want a piece of this, like giant popular podcast. And they bought the exclusive rights to the podcast for $200 million. Which is unbelievably insane. This was a huge deal for Joe Rogan, but also for podcasts. <laughs> That's go. Even after this big deal, the show retained its unfiltered quality. It still was Joe Rogan sitting around, chatting with mostly dudes, talking openly and unfiltered for hours. This is mind boggling. This is like unironically journalistic malpractice. I think I... I think I put a lot of, um, 
I think I place Johnny Harris like a, many cuts above like the average YouTube essayist because I think that his like research is pretty dedicated. Um, and and obviously like I I know we have ideological differences on foreign policy and whatnot, but. This is one aspect where I did not think Johnny Harris was going to basically lie by a mission to dick ride Joseph Robinette Rogue in this way. You don't know what a bear is. I've seen a bear in the wild. When you see a bear in the wild, you're like, oh, you're, you don't give a fuck about me. Often getting progressively more high with his guest. <laughs> do people get upset at you if you do certain things? Just uh, tobacco and marijuana in there. Uh, I, I'm getting text messages from from, from, from friends saying, "What the hell are you doing smoking weed?" Okay, so my job has apparently turned into getting super deep into watching stuff that I never watched before, like North Korean films and now Joe Rogan podcasts. Like I've dedicated a significant amount of my time over the past several months to watching this show. And even still, I'm just scratching the surface. These episodes are long; they're like two and a half hours on average, and there are almost 2,000 of them. We're talking thousands and thousands of hours of this stuff. Luckily for this story, I had help from our story producer, Alex, to help us listen to a lot of this stuff. I also spoke with some longtime Joe Rogan- Whatever, dog. I'm a One Piece fan, okay? Talk to me when you fucking become a One Piece enjoyer, okay? Get the fuck out of here. And listeners for some insight. And here in the office, we actually had some pretty nice heated debates about Joe Rogan. <laughs> And now, after my baptism by Joe Rogan, I now have some big takeaways, some things I want to say. Number one, Joe hates boxes. And people love that he hates boxes. He spends a lot of time lambasting our society's need to fit people into buckets, into labels. I think this left, white, right paradigm is really kind of f***ing foolish at this point. Bro, are you kidding me? He's just like, he, he's basically saying that like Joe Rogan is a dumbass, but in a nice way. Like, let me reframe that real quick. Oh, he just hates boxes. What is this fucking liberal wine mom shit, dude? What, what are we doing here? Oh, he just hates labels. That's why he's like that. He's a Scorpio. Like, get the fuck out of here, Johnny Harris. What the hell is going on? I've never felt this way about a Johnny Harris video until this moment. It's a subject matter that I am the foremost authority and expert on. Maybe that's the reason. Maybe that's how you feel when you hear him talk about, like, fucking... Uh, coups that he did not mention or whatever the fuck. I mean, I I am by no means a subject matter expert on that, but this is something that I'm an absolute subject matter expert on. And it's deeply and insanely frustrating to see him uh, cover it like this. Oh, he's just like, oh, he's just a, you know, he's just a guy who hates boxes. Like, that's not... <coughs> it's how we get when you talk sports. Yeah, but I'm very deliberately telling you I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about with sports and don't care to know. That's the difference. I'm not presenting something on sports like I'm the fucking authority on it. I didn't make a 35-minute YouTube essay on sports. You know what I mean? And indeed, it's fairly impossible to put Joe Rogan into the standard ideological boxes that we're all sort of pressured to fit into. Most of our media discourse loves boxes, loves to inflame our super identities, the things that- Wait, why is he positioning himself like he wasn't at fucking Vox News? which is like the box creator, okay? They are the box store, okay? They make the fucking boxes. You made the boxes. It was like, oh, man, the media, mainstream media is like, they love boxes, right? Not Joe Rogan, though. Free thinker, by the way. Get the fuck out of here. Oh, my God. Oh that my we God. must believe in order to be a good liberal or a good conservative. What kind of opinions are okay to have because they don't interfere with anybody else's life, and it's just the, your philosophy and the way you look at the world, and you should be able to express that opinion and express those ideas in front of someone else who has an opposing idea, and they tell you why they disagree. And so before I listened to a million hours of the show, I had mostly seen Joe Rogan in the context of like short little edited clips of like SmackDown showing like some egregious thing that Joe Rogan had said that he was trans. Oh, he was duped. Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan is an enigma. Okay. A mystery trapped inside of a riddle. Joe Rogan contains multitudes. You don't get it. If you've seen Joe Rogan online, you've probably been clipped him. Well, let me tell you, 
as someone who watched uninterrupted thousands of fucking hours of this dumb ape who I used to love and have a lo have admiration for, who I've met personally, let me tell you, okay? You're not being clip chimped, okay? What the fuck is this guy saying? Oh, dude, he contains multitudes. Like, when he's talking about ivermectin and throwing the kitchen sink, like, people are just clip chimping him. Except he did do that. Oh, when he's talking about, like, transphobia, he's just, like, he's actually just talking about, like, trans girls in sports. Like, that's a real big issue, dude. He cares about fairness in sports. It's like, dude, what are you saying? Do you think Johnny Harris just really wants to be invited on the podcast so we made a whole video glazing Joe Rogan? I don't know. I don't want to be, like, the cynical guy. I don't want to be the cynical guy who's like, oh, there's an alternative reason here why, as to why he's saying uh, these things. Maybe he's just a dumbass. I don't know. We'll see. It's phobic or fat phobic or misogynistic or racist. There's a lot of these mashups out there. She's giant. Like, look at the yeah. size of her head, her formerly male head. Yeah. That's a giant we woman. We walk into <laughs> We walked in <laughs> dude. We, we, we walked in the door and there He's saying Planet of the Apes in that, by the way. You know, contains multitudes, guys. Yeah. He's saying, uh, he's, uh, he walked into, I think it was a movie theater or something, and there was, he, he said an area where there was only black people was like Planet of the Apes. There was no white people. There was no white people. Wow. That video is so bad, it actually made me miss the n-word video and when you watch this stuff it's so easy to just like slot him into like oh he must be like some far-right sort of like racist reactionary commentator so i was surprised honestly when i listened to a lot of this guy and to find out that he is actually like that right bro are you fucking stupid look 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 i've told you this before i don't think joe rogan is like a psychotic anti-black racist. And people have shit on me for this, especially because I was talking about it literally in the confines of the N-word saga that he was going through again when people were canceling him for his earlier N-word takes. I don't think he is. And I'll stand by that. I've listened to the man uh, for thousands and thousands and thousands of hours, okay? I don't think he's like an anti-black racist. He is racist, though. <laughs> and sometimes can be anti-black. He's not more anti-black racist than the average like out and about you know serious uh centrist apolitical andy or whatever he's from fucking boston i think he lived in new jersey for an extended period of time of course he's a white guy all right but overall 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 he's not like deliberately cutting secretly anti-black uh racist propaganda those older videos he has apologized for he knows that shit is bad. Um, that's one thing. Okay? Having said that, however, to act like a lot of this stuff is clipped out of context and he, he contains multitudes, he offers so much more, is mind-boggling. Okay? Because with Joe Rogan, what you see is what you fucking get. Sure, he's a bit of a chameleon who changes ideologies on a whim in accordance to who he's talking to, but I believe the far better way of analyzing Joe Rogan is off of things, I will categorize this, things he cares about and will defend. Because Joe Rogan is malleable. He's always been that way. Unprincipled and malleable. And back in the day, there were a couple things he put in the I care about this box. Early Joe Rogan always would put smoking weed, and even doing DMT in the I care about this box. That box inside of his mushy, soft brain was, was made by, uh, like, this, this impenetrable armor, okay? He would defend it non-fucking-stop. Doesn't matter. You could have an expert on, you could have an expert on, and, and ha convince this man that, like, the moon is fake, and he would probably believe it. But if you told him, weed is bad, he'd be like, fuck you, that's not the case, here is, like, why uh, that is not the case. Fuck yourself. Okay? As a matter of fact, Joe Rogan used to believe that the moon landing was fake. I think he's changed his position on that, but it doesn't matter. So, that box grew. Okay? Over time, that box grew. It doesn't mean his brain grew. But 
things got added into that box. Okay? Things got added in that box that he started fucking unironically defending. One of them was ivermectin or vaccine denial. Another one was girls playing, uh, cis girls playing with trans girls in sports. The, uh, was it Fallon Fox era? Like where he slowly started dipping his water in the uh, anti-trans shit. Okay. And he dived into it. Okay. He fucking dove in head first. And that was literally before the Christian right unironically found out that anti-trans issues only worked really well when, if it, when it was paired up with sports and fairness in sports. Joe Rogan was ahead of the game. He was a genuine figure that genuinely believed that it was unjustifiable and completely ridiculous to allow trans women to compete with cis women. Okay? He was ahead of the curve. He was ahead of the right-wing Christian lobby. So, remember that. That was the other thing that was in his box. Now that box is full of fucking right-wing bullshit. Okay? Completely. Just like, cancel culture is so bad. Uh, trans women in sports. Like, back in the day... Joe Rogan was an infinitely more interesting figure because the show was interesting because there was a multitude of different opinions. And since 2014, 2015, the show has slowly but surely became more and more and more right-wing. As people have come and gone, as the, uh, as the people that he used to have were like fun, interesting guys, even the fun, interesting guys have become charlatan hawkers of... Uh, of, of pills and supplements uh, instead of just being like a unique and interesting guy. Uh, people that sell you courses, uh, cryptocurrency charlatans, people like that. Like he, he substituted the interesting guys for newer, shittier, late stage capitalist versions of said shittier guys. He substituted the mushroom guys for guys that are selling you something different. You know what I mean? Like, it still seems like a mushroom guy. It sounds like a mushroom guy, but this guy is also selling you some other, uh, some other shit. It's not just cranks. It's con men cranks. Okay? But worst of all, he substituted the thinkers, okay, that were unique and interesting and comedians and whatnot with right-wing media people. Okay? So many right-wing media people have basically gained prominence off of the backs of the Joe Rogan experience. Genuinely sad. Genuinely sad state of affairs. And for those of, our, uh, for those of you who are asking, like, why did you stop watching? It's because, honestly, it got fucking boring. You guys know me. I'm not exactly the type of person that would stop watching content because it's offensive, okay? If anything, it made me look at it harder, all right? Because I certainly was fucking locked in even during the alt-right Gamergate era of Joe Rogan. I was watching all those fucking content creators come on. I was angry. I was white-knuckling through it, but I was still watching because it was still interesting to a certain degree. Now it's just fucking boring. Now it's just an old man who's so out of touch, so rich, and, and he has created a circle of yes-men he rarely ever has interesting guests on. Uh, he, when he does, they're like barely ever talking about fucking aliens. Like it doesn't seem like the heart of the show is there. Okay. Podcast was a great outlet for people who didn't have an older brother uh, who smoked weed and told you about dumb shit. Okay. That's what it, that's what the podcast was. Nowadays, the conspiracy guys are fucking like too insane to even appreciate because they're also trying to like, like they're so, they're so grimy. They're trying to sell you something and you're like, come on, dude, just like be really invested in the conspiracy. That's all I care about. You know what I mean? Make content. Don't try to sell me something. Okay. Nowadays, everybody sees it as like an opportunity to sell something. They don't go on there to have an interesting discussion. 
They go on there to become famous, and they know how fucking, how, how target-rich of an environment Joe Rogan's audience is because they're all fucking apes themselves. I listened to Faithful until mid-2015. His guests got worse and worse. There were too many Callan Schaub episodes or too few oceanographers, etc. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Brian Callan and Brendan Schaub episodes were also fucking just awful. The other day, he actually had a physicist on. I looked him up and saw that he works for Prager U. That's what I mean. Like, there is no more. Every single person that Joe Rogan has on is like by, has like some level of fucking association with like a right-wing media outlet. Like, it's so bad. It's all of them, dude. Every single one. It sucks. I mean, guys, this guy had fucking Dave Rubin on multiple times. Get the fuck out of here. That's when you've lost the plot. Dave Rubin offers nothing. He offers nothing. He's not interesting. He's not unique. He's not funny. He's just a right-wing guy. That's it. Any right-wing guy. It just sucks. So when you ask me why I don't watch fucking Joe Rogan no more, that's the reason. Because his content fucking blows dicks, dude. That's why. I'd still watch if he was... I'd probably still watch Joe Rogan if he was being like insanely racist if he somehow also managed to make it entertaining okay i'm white the armor of privilege probably frustrate me but i could still find uh some kind of of, of content out of it you know what i mean yeah like alex jones point is he's also not entertaining It's a similar thing that happened with Sam Harris. Harris coddled anti-Islam because of the target version environment. Right-wingers all go on Rogan because he's dumb and so are his listeners. Easy grift. Yeah. Joe Rogan can spend one hour saying, we got to take care of the environment, regulate more, hold corporations accountable, blah, blah, blah. And on the next episode, he's like, nah, fuck all that woke shit. Ron DeSantis 2024. Yeah. Which is why if you are Vox.com's very own Johnny motherfucking Harris, how do you make a video like this and you make it seem like Joe Rogan contains multitudes when he's literally a chameleon and even the dumbest Brazilian jiu-jitsu guy who's been choke slammed so fucking hard that his brain no longer works the same. He might have gotten a stroke from all of his Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Even that guy fucking understands that Joe Rogan is a chameleon. So how the fuck did, did Johnny Harris not see it? This is how you get invited on. I mean, yeah, I will never be invited on the Joe Rogan experience. Let's be fucking real. doesn't matter if I'm the most famous person on the planet. That's the, that is the reality. Because I do not ride his dick. Johnny Harris, on the other hand, is kind of bouncing on it right now, doing tricks on it a little bit. To find out that his politics actually lean mostly left. She's right. the wife of the best president that we right, have had right. in our lifetime. He openly and earnestly voices support for everything from universal health care to abortion to gay marriage to recreational drugs. I lean way left when it comes to those kind of things. Gay rights and things like... Dog, he's literally a fucking Ron DeSantis supporter. Get the fuck out of here. Jesus. Social programs for disenfranchised people and disenfranchised communities. I, mm -hmm. I lean way left. Like, if I want my tax dollars to go to anything i wanted to go to making people's lives easier i'm not right wing at all oh okay no. that's wild no there's nothing about me that's right wing he even endorsed bernie sanders wait 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 you know just two left wing guys talking right johnny johnny what do you think about jimmy Dore, johnny what do you think about his ukraine takes for example what do you think about jimmy Dore? think he's a left wing guy too come on I mean, I know you want to go on Joe Rogan's uh, show, but do you want to go on Jimmy Dore's show? Probably not. So you're probably going to be honest about his perspective, aren't you? Come on. There's the Democratic Socialist in 2020 after having him on the show. <laughs> There's not a single human that can speak for all the American no, people. I but you that. could look out for the interests of the, of the American people. And I think Bernie Sanders definitely does do that. you got three people owning more wealth than the bottom half of the American society. You don't see that on television too much, do you? No, you don't. Three people. You got the top 1% owning more wealth than the bottom 92%. What are the misconceptions of you? Because here's, here's the, if you go to... Point to a fucking post-COVID clip of Joe Rogan being a fucking leftist openly saying he's a leftist. I'm going to lose my fucking mind, okay? The closest you get to is when he's talking to that fucking freak Seth Dillon, okay? 
the Babylon B guy. And Seth Dillon is trying to fucking argue that it's okay to force a 13-year-old who's been raped to uh, carry a pregnancy to term. And Joe Rogan sees red. That is the only time I've seen in the fucking post-COVID universe where Joe Rogan was like, hold up, this is insane. No, you can't do that. You can't do that to my daughter. That's what he says. Also, it doesn't matter if he says he's a leftist. Right-wingers love to say they're leftists when they're not. Tim Pool, the leftist. Exactly. This is starting to piss me the fuck off, dude. It's starting to piss me off. Oh, my God. Listen, man. Joe Rogan is not that complex, okay? It's not. He's just like the average American voter in many ways. Really fucking far right on some issues, really fucking far left on others, maybe, depending on who you ask or how they're feeling in that moment. But if there's one thing that Joe Rogan is not, that is a person who has thought, th thought things through, okay? He's just like the classic fucking American voter who's like, oh, I voted for a Republican. Now I'm voting for a fucking Democrat. Oh, I don't know. That's who he is. And as someone who claims to have watched thousands of hours of fucking Joe Rogan, I would have expected this dude to at least done a better job of describing that instead of being like, he is so complex of a figurehead. This is literally just signaling to the YouTube audience that you're doing PR for Joe Rogan because you want to go on his fucking show and you want to eat away at some of his market share. You want some of his fans to watch your fucking videos. That's it, man. It's so disingenuous. It is fucking... It is so cowardly to do this. It is so fucking cowardly to do this. You can make an honest assessment. I've defended Joe Rogan time and time again on issues where people have taken it too fucking far. Okay? But this is ridiculous. Trying to audition to be on the fucking Joe Rogan experience by making this fucking big-ass YouTube video and, and, like, simultaneously getting a lot of views on it because Joe Rogan has a lot of fans, obviously, is so, is so cowardly. I really hope that this changes a little bit, this video. Like, there's no way this is just a suck show, right? What are the knee-jerk conservative reaction? You talk to people who are not interested in anyone that wants to be a democratic socialist. They hear the name Bernie Sanders. The negative implications are that you are somehow or another going to take their money, right? right? Did, is that annoying to you? Yes, it is. Of course it is. Oh, and here he is with presidential hopeful Andrew Yang. Another with beacon of left-wing ideas, man. Oh, I'm so mad. I'm so mad. I'm fucking losing my mind. I hate Americans. I hate Americans. I hate how fucking stupid they are about politics. Andrew Yang was never a leftist, okay? From the jump. I don't give a fuck what YouTube personality told you, what YouTube essayist, debater, commentator that told you that Andrew Yang was a fucking left-wing guy. He never was a left-wing guy. UBI is not a leftist concept. If UBI was a leftist concept, then Milton fucking Friedman would be considered a leftist. Fuck! I said this literally in like whenever the fuck Andrew Yang popped out, okay? Whenever, whatever year, the first time. I said, listen, you gotta be careful, okay? UBI, if seen as a substitute, there are old videos, you can find them in like 2018, 2016, 2017, whenever the fuck Andrew Yang gained prominence. UBI is great as long as it is not a substitute for the, per, the social safety nets that exist. Andrew Yang absolutely presented it as such. Okay? I like Yang until I saw you talk about him like four years ago. And people would come in here and try to fucking advocate for Yang Gang. Non-stop. Just wait till the end. You're going to blow one. I am already blowing one. I've already fucking blown a gasket, dude. I'm getting a fucking aneurysm. Oh, you had Andrew Yang on. Such a leftist. Him on the super progressive idea of universal basic income. My initial knee-jerk reaction was, get the f*** out of here. Like, universal basic income. I'm just going to give people money. They're just going to be lazy. Nothing's ever going to get done. That's a terrible idea. 
And then I started paying attention to the rise of AI and automation and how many jobs are going to get taken yes, away. Yes. from. And then once you see the actual numbers, it's pretty staggering. But despite thinking that, he presents his ideas in this very kind of anti-woke, anti-political correctness, say whatever you want type of vibe. And this is confusing, but also very appealing. People love to listen to a guy whose views and language are all over the place. I think for a lot of people, it's like a respite from the predictable lineup of popular voices that tow a predictable list of beliefs, opinions, views, and enemies. Rogan's style is rare, and I think people like that. Which gets me to my second big takeaway. Bitch, I'm anti woke. Get the fuck out of here, dude. That is not, dude, there's a difference between like not caring about the aesthetic, uh, uh, the aesthetic subtext or the aesthetic uh, liberalism, and and of and hand waving that away, and even sometimes going so far as to shit on the people that come in here to do rad lib bullshit. Like, oh my god, I can't believe you didn't issue a trigger warning here. Blah blah blah. Like I've talked about the narcissism of radical liberalism so many fucking times. Okay, so many times. That is a stylistic choice. That can be a part of your personality, a part of your ideology, okay? Joe Rogan goes way beyond that. The idea that he is like this super progressive guy is insane. I yell at trans people from time to time in here when they're fucking chirping about some dumb shit, okay? I have trans chatters that I, that I yell at, okay? That doesn't mean I'm fucking transphobic. There's a difference between doing that and telling, for example, trans people to not be cringe posting in the chat versus being transphobic. That's the difference. You know what I mean? There's a difference between the two. Like, oh, he doesn't care about political correctness. Like, get the fuck out of here. That's crazy. Joe Rogan sells contrarianism. That is his product. A quick reminder that Joe Rogan isn't just a guy. He is a commercial icon, a seasoned performer who performs for an audience for money. He knows what people want, and he is selling something very popular, an alternative to the endless reductionist polarized name calling of our current discourse. They all do the same move. They drop down and do the splits. That's what I think when I'm watching your shows too. You know? But he is more corrected to the masses than you, dude. I think the video is reading that he reaches all the subgroups of society rather than you highly reaching lives when the main audience is left is wait what? That's crazy to me, man. Johnny like comments on his video saying he hopes he goes on JRE. Look, everybody wants to go on the Joe Rogan experience. I would love to go on the Joe Rogan experience. The difference between me and other people is that I'm not gonna fucking bounce on Joe's dick to be able to have that opportunity. That's the main difference. Do you get it? And a lot of people know full well that Joe will not have you on if you shit on him. That's it. But Johnny Harris, on the other hand, is blowing bubbles. He's blowing bubbles on it. He's doing tricks on it. I feel like Joe Rogan has fallen off. I think there's still a part of me that is uh, a young Joe Rogan fan that will always say, like, it doesn't matter how little his audience is, I would love to still go on the JRE, uh, the Joe Rogan experience. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, though. I'm not going to fucking, like, lie or, or omit the truth and, and act like Joe Rogan is something he's not. It's just so ridiculous. All the same stuff. But <laughs> and he goes to great lengths to stake himself out as this anti-authority, anti-establishment platform where anyone can come and talk. If you're in not one true. camp, you're supposed to have all the opinions that one camp has. Yeah. And if you do not align with all the opinions that one camp has, you find yourself cast out of the group. No woke police, no mainstream media bias, no corporate deception, just an earnest, curious guy trying to find the truth and not really worrying too much. Yeah, anyone but Sam Cedar, you know what I mean? Any Anyone but Sam Cedar. Like, no, man, no. If you've ever fucking criticized Joe Rogan extensively, you're not going on it, okay? Look at Kyle Kalinske. Love Kyle. You won't see Kyle fucking uh, doing anti-Joe Rogan commentary ever. Why? Because Kyle's on the Joe Rogan experience. David Pakman. I don't even think David does that. Or if he has, I don't know if he's going on the Joe Rogan experience anytime soon. You know what I mean? That's just the reality. Like, uh, it's just... 
You're not. He's not going to have people on that shit on him, okay? Kyle will go on and, and push back every now and then, but he rarely will have people on that, oh, David does and is no longer invited? Yeah, there you go. If you have, I know Dave Packman's been on, and it's actually really valuable. It's really valuable to go on to Joe Rogan Experience if you're a leftist, okay? It is. But he has no time for anybody that has ever criticized him. Okay? Adam Conover pushed back. Yeah, remember when Adam Conover pushed back and then he was always invited ever again? And also, when Adam Conover was on, he was on a fucking TV show. And he had never talked about Joe Rogan beforehand, I don't think. What are you talking about? I'm talking about people that is already people that have already cut commentary on Joe's uh, behavior. About changing his language to fit the politically correct sensitivities of the day. What I didn't anticipate was social media and the echo chambers that it would provide. Right. And that these ideological echo chambers also come with virtue signaling. And that people get on these things because you're, you're only dealing with a short amount of characters and you state something that you know is going to get a bunch of likes. And people right. are very addicted to likes. The fans I talk to love this about Joe Rogan. Like he's like the antidote to like the corporate mainstream biased media that's polarizing us all. And frankly, I think he leans into this as his brand. Which gets me to my third point. And this is where I have my biggest critique of Joe Rogan. Joe lets people talk. That's your biggest critique of Joe Rogan? After you said he sells contrarianism, this is neatly repackaging. One is neatly repackaging that Joe Rogan is a fucking dumb ape, and people love that because that is true. Joe Rogan himself admits that, okay? Just like I admit I'm a fucking dumbass, okay? Straight up, Joe Rogan is a dumb ape. He doesn't hate boxes. He just doesn't understand it, okay? He's not engaging in, like, hyper-intellectual conversations that go beyond the neatly uh, confined ideological boxes that we have in, in neoliberal monoculture, okay? Number two, Joe sells contrarianism, is just reactionary politics. Joe sells reactionary politics. When you're a dumb ape, you, of course, respond like a dumb ape to new things that are happening around you that you cannot understand. You have two options when you're a fucking dumb ape. I'm a dumb ape, too, so I know this, okay? I'm a dumb ape. So when I see something that I don't fucking fully understand, my immediate reaction isn't like, fuck that. No, no, stay there. Not happening. My immediate reaction is either, I don't care enough about this. Who gives a fuck? Move on. Or let me understand. Let me try to see what is going on in the world uh, that I am, am uh, you know, now privy to. Okay? What's happening? Why are these people saying these things? Is there any truth to what's going on here? Joe doesn't do that. He's like, that's different. That's change. Me no like change. That is reactionary, okay? He's not selling contrarianism. He's selling reactionary politics, reacting to stimuli, reacting to progress happening all around him, refusing to identify with it, refusing to understand it, and saying, change bad, change bad, change bad. Number three, Joe lets people talk. That's my main criticism. If anything, that's the only good thing that he does, but it's a bad thing because he's a reactionary and only has reactionary guests. There was an element of curiosity back in the day and, and allowing people to talk that made the Joe Rogan experience good. But when the guests and the style of guests changed, all of a sudden the nature of the content changed. Okay? I love the, yeah, by the way, I love the idea of being contrarian when you're literally selling mainstream American conservative reactionary politics. What the fuck is reactionary? What the fuck is contrarian about Joe Rogan when he's like half the time saying shit that you would either hear on MSNBC or more than half the time hearing uh, saying shit that you hear on Fox News on a daily basis? Woke culture sucks. These youth are too gay. They're too liberal. They're too woke. They're too soft. What about that is contrarian? Yeah, Joe has also gotten mad at Jamie for proving him slash his guest wrong, pushing misinformation. Jamie rarely pulls shit up anymore. Uh, and, and he used to. He used to at least be like the final barrier, like the, the Cheeto holding the door uh, as the SWAT team is ready to break it. That was Jamie pulling shit up on his computer. Now that's kind of gone too. Anyway. Let's continue. And talk. And 
talk and talk. The principles of human interaction on this planet uh, are largely dictated by our ability to discuss things, even if you disagree. As we've seen, Joe has had a huge variety of guests on his show. A lot of these are like famous people that you just get to watch talk in this sort of unfiltered way, like Robert Downey Jr. or Miley Cyrus. But then you also have a lot of people with big opinions and big points of view from super mainstream and respected voices to experts on like really specific science things. But then you have a handful of a lot of controversial this guy hasn't used a singular clip post-2019. He talked about the Spotify bag, and he has rarely shown the post-Spotify Joe. What is this? Like, literally, the fucking Joe Rogan subreddit would look at this video and go, what's happening? This, is, this does not feature any of the new Joe Rogan shit. Are you marketing old Joe? You're showing some of his highlights with, like, you know, controversial parts of it too, while avoiding some of the more controversial parts, as a matter of fact, like not really talking about any of the times that he's had out and about white supremacists on like fucking Gavin McGinnis, Stefan Molnier, Sargon of Akkad, Milo Yiannopoulos. Didn't even have, did he have Paul Joseph Watson on? I feel like he even had that fucking freak on. So many. What is happening here? Please. Fringe characters, people who have been censored or canceled by the mainstream media. And honestly, I think Joe takes huge pride in having this spectrum of different points of view. Now, I don't know Joe Rogan, but my guess is that half of this is his personality. He seems to be a guy who loves to discuss things with people. He seems to have an open mind. But I think half of this, again, is a response to the upkeep of his brand. I think he likes the appeal of being this anti-mainstream platform. Yeah, fuck, he had Andy No on. Oh my God. Where anyone who has been canceled by the woke mob can come and get their fair shake, tell their side of the story. I mean, it's you don't have to agree on, on everything. In order yeah, here's a guy who's been canceled by the woke mob. Get the fuck out of here, man or to have a common sense of the important values that, that unify the country or should. Yeah. And here comes my big critique. I think there's a fallacy tucked into all of this. When Joe has these people on, it almost feels like he's giving them a chance to tell their side of the story. Like they don't have a place to, to tell their side and they've been unfairly censored. But I think this is flawed thinking. Not everyone who has a point of view and who is famous has ideas worth hearing or debating in our society. I really believe that. There are people who've gotten famous simply because they've- This is literally the most liberal ass way to criticize Joe Rogan. I'm gonna fucking, I am going to Sudoku. Oh my fucking Lord. Oh my God. Dog, the problem isn't, the problem isn't he's offering a platform to these people. The problem is he's not capable of pushback, okay? He is a fucking chameleon. That's the issue. And as a chameleon, when all of the motherfucking right-wing people that he has on are just on there chirping, and he's like, oh, yeah, that's crazy. I can't believe there's litter boxes in schools. And, like, he just repeats them over and over and over again. Over the course of, like, four or five fucking years, it becomes this reactionary shithole. Okay? You can absolutely have the likes of Ben Shapiro and whoever the fuck you want on. You just have to be able to deal with it adequately because these guys are charlatans they are they are carnival barkers myself included like this is what people like that uh, people like ben shapiro people like matt walsh people like myself we do this professionally okay our job is to craft a narrative jesus christ our job is to defend our positions our job is to craft a perfect narrative that makes our positions look better than other positions, okay? This is what I do professionally. This is what Ben does professionally. If you're a dumb fucking ape with a malleable pasty brain, you're not capable of understanding that the person in front of you is doing propaganda and you have no way to deal with it. So you just look at it and go, oh, this guy's earnest. Now the difference between me and Ben Shapiro is that I do truly believe the things I say. And I also truly believe the things I say are, are good, okay? And they're right. Bro, you're just mad because he's never had you on? Yeah, I know. That's why I'm mad. You got me, dude. Oh, 11 month subscriber, dude. I'm gonna fucking... I am... I'm Sudokuing. I'm Sudokuing, dude. Bro, just because he's not completely shitting on him, he's doing an okay job. Steven Crowder. 
Definitely stop watching right before the Spotify deal. Bernie Sanders, you're just mad because he hasn't had you on. Okay, you agree with me. Why the fuck are you trying to be a little bitch in the chat? You even brought Steven Crowder. Dumbass. Can't stop himself from baiting. You've made a career off of being loud and mean, and human nature loves that for some reason. The f Shannon! With Here's a, kill like here's a show with Gavin McGinnis. I started this gang called the Proud Boys, and the uh, Proud Boys, the Proud Boys. What is the, what's Proud Boys about? A far right extremist group that promotes white supremacy ideology and proudly promotes violence against groups they don't agree with. Four members of the Proud Boys, that far right extremist organization, while well, they've been found guilty of seditious conspiracy for their roles in the January 6th attack on the Capitol. Hassan apologizes, Joni. Suck my dick, dude. Oh man, he had he had one criticism in eighteen minutes. Like here he is fondly remembering the time after fucking glazing him. Like he's like, oh my god, the Pratt Boys did January six, and Joe Rogan had Gavin McGinnis on. Oh no, man, he's not cooking in this shit. I thought he was because I'm a firm believer that like liberalism was going to jump out at a certain point and stop Johnny. From from you know uh, glazing up this this titan of a man who has been at the forefront of anti-trans rhetoric online, forefront of fucking anti-vaxxer shit online, you know what I mean? Joe Rogan has had on every fucking prominent anti-vaxxer, anti-science kook and crank that uh, that has a website from 1994 that's still selling colloidal silver supplements on the entire planet. Okay. He hasn't stopped doing that. And now Emmy Award recipient Johnny Harris is over here being like, oh, all that stuff, he's just, you know, he's, he's just a, he's a curious guy. He, he contains multitudes. He's not, you can't put him in a box. Time his group violently attacked people who were protesting Milo Yiannopoulos at Berkeley. He goes, I started feeling bad, in it. I started feeling bad after a while. Because I was just, I could tell these kids had never been in a fight. And I was just mowing through them. <laughs> I mean... I don't know, like having a guy on your show. Like that's, that's his biggest criticism is that Joe Rogan just lets people like this talk too much because he's curious. Yeah, you know how many fucking times I've heard that from Joe Rogan dick riders? Get the fuck out of here. That is the classic former and current Joe Rogan fan uh, take is that like, oh, he just, dude, you just don't get it. He has a multitude of different guests on from different backgrounds. Remember when he had Bernie Sanders on that one time? He very clearly is an open-minded progressive. He's just a curious guy. But like, yeah, maybe sometimes he's just letting people th uh, speak too much. That's not criticism, okay? That's not fucking criticism. That's ridiculous. Joe Rogan is not a small bean, okay? He's not like uh, some neurodivergent minor... Yeah, he had Bernie on and then 10,000 white supremacists. But that one time he had Bernie on, though, he had Tulsi Gabbard on so many times, guys. Think about how progressive he is. Tulsi Gabbard, Jimmy Dore. So progressive, so progressive, so progressive. I wish you got this aggressive with Ethan on the H3 podcast, bro. Do you think that I would have this level of contention with my fucking podcast co-host? You think I haven't made the mental calculations before I started working with Ethan on whether or not he was like Joe Rogan? Are you making a comparison to Ethan Klein, modern-day contemporary Ethan, Ethan Klein, as Joe Rogan? He pushes you around sometimes, in my opinion. Shut the fuck up. Suck my dick, you fucking neurodivergent losers who only want fucking debate. Jesus Christ. That's what you want. You want blood sport. That's why you're in here. You're in here because you're like, you just want fucking blood sport. You want me and Ethan to fucking me, 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 constantly fucking uh, pick at each other. You don't care about anything. You don't care about the content. You just want blood. Disagree, ban. I haven't done this in a while, but I think it's, it's time to do that. Are you fucking stupid? You think I would have a podcast with a co-host that has Joe Rogan brain rot right now? What are you, fucking insane? Hassan, Hassan Bobby throwing a tantrum? Dude, yes, 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 yes. Get him. Get him. Fucking, we haven't done this in a while. We haven't purged in a while. I think if you're doing low-level bait, low-effort bait right now, just get fucking clapped. Your head will get cut off. Sorry. We'll pull you out in the fucking uh, public square and execute you summarily, okay?
It's been a, it's been a minute. I haven't done a purge in a long time. Go ahead. Talk about how uh, I, I ban disagreeers all the time. I don't give a fuck. I'll ban you. Just remember that you are a gigantic fucking loser if you think being banned in this chat for annoying me and being a nuisance is actually uh, indicative of, like, your free speech being taken away from you. You can take that to the bank. You can take that to the subreddits. You can fucking cry about it and be like, Hassan, he hates criticism. He hates it. He's so thin-skinned. You can cry about it all you want. It'll make you feel better if you want. Ultimately, you are a weak, insecure baby. If that is your, like, if that's what you think you were put on this uh, earth for. You know what I mean? And there are plenty of others like you. So you'll those complainers crying alongside you. A lot of them are fucking losers, okay? Don't be a loser. The only thing that it isn't indicative is your own securities law. Yeah, you're right. A deeply and undesirably insecure man gets fucking professionally shitted on by thousands of people on a daily basis. Brother, when I pull a chatter up here and a couple chatters at you, you literally lose your shit. You wet your diapers, okay? What the fuck do you mean? This is what I do for a living. There is not a single person that you know. Your favorite content creator doesn't withstand this much criticism on a daily basis. Look at you. Like, you think this is bravery that you're demonstrating. You said, yes, I'm right. You're anonymous online. You're talking shit in a Twitch chat. I'm sorry. Like, none of us are actually breaking new boundaries here, okay? My man said, GG easy, like, we're going to fucking ban him, and he did something super brave. Yes, I'm right. <sighs> I feel like that would be up his alley, Bellingcat. Ay, ay, ay. I think OSINT reporting from Bellingcat is something to dig through on this stream. Value of vetting your sources is paramount right now. Ukraine Andy, I know what community this guy's coming from, okay? But is Johnny right or no? I actually lost because of the great names. No, man. Johnny Harris is, is fucking dick riding Joe Rogan into oblivion. And many of the people that are in this chat right now that are trying to get a rise out of me 100% agree with that. But they just like forgot that for a second because they want to fucking uh, get a rise out of me so they can go to their subreddit and be like, look how much I pissed off Hassan and I got banned because they think that that is like a, like a marker of success. Like you're going to get your fucking flowers for doing that. You're a loser if you do that. Please. It's not healthy for you, I promise. He's done 19 minutes of glaze up on Joe Rogan. Many of those, ironically, many of those communities that are uh, that that would run to be like, look how look how Hassan bans interlocutors for making good opinions uh, known or whatever. Okay, would also agree with me on this shit. He's like constantly fucking anti-science, Joe Rogan. I mean. Joe, who espouses the view that lenient immigration and abortion among white women is leading to white genocide in the West, doesn't feel like fruitful, robust dialogue that will open all of our minds and push the boundaries of our discourse. It feels like outraging people with old tribal ideas to get attention. And this is my critique, is like, it feels like sometimes Joe will have these people on because they say and do reprehensible things, not in spite of it. I'm taking the low road, I'm punching them in the face. So that's and... what you're doing with this outfit? Yes. They think they can ruin his work because he jerked off in front of some people. You know, I'm not going to bow down before them and say you were right, and they want me to. But they weren't right, I'm right, I wrote it, bitch. Again, his brand is the anti-establishment place where you won't get censored by the woke police. But listen. Joe is absolutely right. Being able to say things, no matter how much I disagree with them, is a vital right. It is an unnatural and precarious thing. People should be able to speak, and we must protect that. I believe that. And Joe should absolutely legally be allowed to give his giant megaphone to whoever he wants. But that doesn't mean I'm not gonna critique it. Because listen, having this open-minded, likable guy who's very good at entertaining us, give his- Yeah, dude, he's right. Dude, it's just- 
People are just mad at Joe Rogan for giving a megaphone, dude. Just express yourself. This is literally liberalism's major issue. Like this, this, this unironically is how this is the reason why many left to say cut a liberal and a fascist bleeds because it's the it's it's the idea of of it's so simple to infiltrate liberal circles with civility and aesthetics while simultaneously uh, promoting really really fucking violent ideologies. Okay. It's like, oh, I'm just going to critique it. Well, critique it. Uh, you haven't critiqued it. If Joe Rogan is a chameleon who changes shapes and ideologies with every single fucking person that he has on, well, then look to his fucking ideology of his guests. Whenever he has a political guest on, it's almost always right wing to far right. Including literal out and about Nazis, man. Come on. This is so stupid. It's like, oh man, he's just like a little... He's, he's just a curious guy. He's a little guy. He doesn't know what he's doing. Like, this is, a, just a, this is a more liberal version of like Joe Rogan dick riding. It's crazy how this is the same guy who made that this is how the U.S. stole Iraq video. I mean, it's not that crazy. I think he's just like very much an online guy. He's got nearly 5 million subs. This is his career. He's just, you know, he's comfortably shaping his, like, YouTube essayist uh, commentary space. Oh, that's what he's doing. No, he's not an online guy. He'd only ever watched clips of Joe Rogan before this video. No, I'm saying he's an online content creator who recognizes that he's an online content creator. And if you want to be a online content creator, especially on YouTube, who's doing commentary in these like convoluted essays, then you got to be a centrist. Okay. This is centrism juice, that dumb bitch juice that people drink. He's just farming, dude. He, yeah. 100% farm is open. <laughs> Listen, liberal, I have the right to bear ivermectin. Don't you think a gentle approach to criticism is more likely to change people's minds sometimes? Man, what the fuck are we talking about? We're talking about Joe Rogan in 2023. We're not talking about Joe Rogan in 2017. We're not talking about Joe Rogan in 2018. We're talking about Joe Rogan in 2023. What the fuck's going on? What do you mean gentle criticism? His entire, half of his fucking community left him behind because they're like, this guy sucks. I'm one of the people. I'm one of the people that used to be a fucking major fan. While this guy was, you know, doing map porn on fucking Vox, I was a Joe Rogan fan. You know what I mean? Actually, fuck that. While he was a fucking Mormon at BYU, I was a Joe Rogan fan. What the fuck are we talking about here? This dude back then thought he was going to a fucking, his own very own planet when he died at Brigham Young University. And I was a fucking Joe Rogan fan back then. So I'm sorry. Maybe I know a little bit more. megaphone to other dudes who promote violence, who tear down science, who invent fake facts and talk about them like they're real. It doesn't promote curiosity. It normalizes lying. It go. validates factlessness, which is something that if you haven't heard, we already have a problem with. We're already battling that. Nuclear bombs actually don't exist that uh, they never actually figured it out, but they realized that the, the threat of nuclear bombs. I used to pull this up every time I talked about Joe Rogan because there were so many unimaginable Joe Rogan dick riders who would come in here and be like, dude, you're just a fucking idiot. You don't understand Joe. Joe is not like that, blah, blah, blah. And I would pull this up. We don't get that as much anymore. There's an entire, you can tell this photo is ancient because you're wearing a Henley. Yeah, I know. Um, the photo is ancient because I'm wearing a Henley and, and Joe's wearing this, this uh, one guy that he used to promote all the fucking time. The person who made these shirts. He used to talk about it on a show all the time. Is it still your top 10 coolest moments? Fuck no. It's just good enough. But Eddie, you can see the bombs. The atom bombs. But you how do you know by seeing off. them that they're Did real? You, and this feeling really hit me when I was listening to the episode with Alex Jones. Alex Jones, a man who has created an empire off of promoting lies and warped information so that he can sell health. Bro, these aren't even his worst offenses, man. Like... 
like Alex Jones is really fucked up, especially after the defamation suit he had him on and he revitalized his career. But like his worst offenses are more insidious. Like his worst moments are trapped inside of a like a random clip where he's talking to someone and immediately goes on a tangent about trans uh people. Like those are his worst moments. His worst moments are when he's like so he, he's so fucking uh, high off the sauce of, of reactionary politics that he's just like, he's just gone overboard and he's talking about like litter boxes in schools and shit. This essay is trying to reduce all of Joe's faults to his guests. Exactly. That's not the whole problem. The problem with his guests is, you know, he's booking these guys with an ideological purpose. Okay. That's the issue with the guests. But the biggest issue is stuff that Joe Rogan defends vociferously. Okay? Stuff that Joe Rogan defends vociferously. Oh, supplements. Our fertility is being targeted and it's dropping across the Western world. Ladies and gentlemen, Anthroplex is the newest addition. In InfoWarsLife.com. A man who was recently ordered to pay $1.5 billion in damages to the families of the Sandy Hook shooting victims for spreading lies about the shooting being a hoax. And yet here he is on the Joe Rogan experience getting a chance to tell his side of the story. When I started getting accused four years ago, a couple years into it, and I said, no, I think it happened. Then people that I had interviewed and things started saying, he's involved, he's one of them. Because he you are now saying that it happened, they thought that you had been compromised. Yes, and then I was realizing, oh, this is a, how it works. A certain percentage of people are schizophrenic. Exactly. And then they just think everything's a conspiracy. Well, this now listen, I'm gonna tell you the truth right now and admit something, which is that when I watched this, I actually had a moment. Where I was like, oh my God, like here's Alex Jones in this like very calm environment. He's not, like yelling like he does on InfoWars. My heart's big. It's got hot blood going through it fast. I like to eat. I like to have children. And I literally thought like, wait, is Alex Jones like, was he wrongfully accused or was this overly exaggerated? Was this like a witch hunt to censor this guy because he's like kind of has far right views? Because this felt like a proper moment for Jones to tell his side of the story. What? I began to realize because I was on the receiving end of people pulling up in white vans with guns at my office saying, I know you put a microchip in my head and I'm going to kill you. So I came out and I said, listen, I never sent anybody to the houses, but I. Dude, no fucking way, dude. Yeah, no, I this got to be because he's a Mormon, right? Like, this is some former Mormon shit. Like, uh, what's the study that shows that, like, former Mormons are way more susceptible to multi-level marketing schemes? Because, like, a part of their brains have been rewired in a dramatic capacity that, like, is really hard to, to, to uh, develop. There ain't no fucking way. No, what is? We, I'm, I apologize I'm pausing for too early. I'm pausing too early. No shot. He's gonna explain his take. There's no shot. Context. People have a right to question, but I, I'm sorry no for shot. the families, and I'm sorry for your hurt, and I get it, and I've experienced crazy people now, big time, just like you have. Please stop saying that I'm saying it didn't happen. And he nearly persuaded me. But wait, no, no. Then I remembered that. My full-time job is to do journalism. No one died in 2012 in Sandy Hook. And luckily, I sit around and fact check things all day. And I researched it. And I reminded myself that there's actually not a ton of nuance here. The facts. Alex Jones repeatedly claimed that the Sandy Hook shooting... <sighs> okay, he didn't go that far. Okay, holy shit. Yeah, journalism. Thank you for doing a lot of journalism on this one, by the way. That was great. So much journalism has happened here. He's hearing Joe have polite conversations and is immediately convinced. Yeah, brother, that's the point, okay? I think that basically gives the game away for why he is uh, behaving this way. Because Joe Rogan has a lot of the, the aesthetics of free speech and civility that you need to have uh, to, to be able to exist in polite society, okay? I don't think that Alex Jones is some, like, nefarious, hyper, far-right, like, ideologically driven fascist that is too cowardly to say these things on his own and, like, tricks people into uh, brainwashing them by having right-wing people on. Okay? I don't think that that's the case. I think that Joe Rogan is a dumbass. Okay? 
He's, he is objectively not very smart. He knows it. He's very talented. He's very successful as a media guy. But he's not very uh, smart when it comes to, I guess, being well-read or exercising. Oh, did I say Alex Jones? I was talking about Joe Rogan uh, when I was talking about civility, uh, liberalism, the aesthetics of civility, and, and like, uh, you know, having debates for the sake of having a debate. Not Alex Jones. Alex Jones is a, a, an awesome entertainer. I love him. He's done nothing wrong. Okay. Uh, anyway, but Joe Rogan. Back to Joe Rogan. Uh <laughs> So, Joe Rogan is very good. Don't say that yet. Yeah, dude, no one is going to fucking sue me for that. What are you, crazy? Obviously, I'm joking. Jesus Christ. Um, I'm being sarcastic. Joe Rogan has the capacity to fool a lot of liberals, or rather... Uh, make a lot of liberals feel like he's just like honest to God, kind of a dumb himbo. Everybody likes him. He's just like, he, do, he knows not what he says, whatever. And like maybe sometimes, sometimes he, uh, you know, goes a little overboard with some of his guests like every now and then, but he has a multitude of different uh, ideologies that he is, that is well represented on his show, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, that's not the case. Like, he definitely does have an ideological perspective. He, his show is ideologically driven. It is right-wing, for the most part. It's slanted. Uh, he used to be definitely a little bit more uh, interesting. But the reality is that Joe Rogan absolutely is, is a, 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 by his own admission, a Ron DeSantis supporter. You know what I mean? Yeah, he went from liberal with, like, uh, interesting opinions, some uh, very progressive positions, to a uh, center-right guy, to far-right. And he's somewhere in between, like, the center-right, far-right. Okay? That's where Joe Rogan is. And that's who his guests are. So... The idea that the the idea that like uh, he knows not what he's doing, or the biggest problem is that like uh, he can he can uh, sometimes let people speak too much is really silly. He is susceptible to propaganda, just like anyone else is, just like I am, just like you are. Uh, he has eaten the uh, propaganda from the right, hook, line, and sinker, and basically created this uh this this echo chamber of center right to far right figures that are all yes men whose careers uh, heavily rely on being able to appear on the Joe Rogan experience um and Johnny Harris being the liberal that he is has kind of uh gotten duped i guess the most in the if I'm going to look at this and assume that Johnny Harris is sincere with the things that he's saying and he's not cynically making this centrist-ass video specifically so he can go on the Joe Rogan experience, then I'm afraid he's naive and he was duped. Okay? If this video is sincere, then Johnny Harris is the most naive motherfucker I've ever met in my entire life and he is super-duper duped by Joe Rogan. But I don't believe that because I think Johnny Harris is much smarter than that. Okay. His guests are just people who personally uh, he agrees with. He just can't outright say it. Yeah, pretty much. That's charitable to offer that possibility. I mean, I think he's glazing. But maybe he's just naive and he like saw a guy who's just trying to simply have ideas or conversations, and he thought maybe he was clip chimped a lot, I guess. And and now he's like, well, you know, Joe Rogan is not all that bad. I genuinely don't know, though. I, I, I'm shocked. Johnny Harris cares more about telling a story than doing the right doing right sometimes. Examples of the coup video and the China video. Dude even admits to it. He will just do shit to fit a story.
shooting was a staged event orchestrated by the globalists, the government, to promote gun control. That's why the globalists use children's deaths to go after our guns, because they know it gets to us. He suggested that the grieving parents were crisis actors and that no children had actually died. Early on, I said, well, they had to have killed somebody. I mean, this doesn't make sense. Then parents come out and start laughing and then turn to the camera and cry. These grieving families who had experienced unimaginable horror had to relocate because of the harassment they received, in part due to Jones peddling of this lie so that it could sell health supplements. These are facts that are available to all of us, okay? And yet, I don't know about you, but if I weren't a full-time journalist who was paid to go down rabbit holes and check facts. Damn, dude, he's, like, he's, he's such a good full-time journalist. Like, come on, bro. Ay, 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 I'm sorry. You can't be fucking glazing up big homie over here for 24 minutes and then be like, I'm a fact-checking full-time journalist. Like, no, man. Let's be real, okay? You're a YouTuber. You're doing YouTuber shit right now. There is nothing more YouTuber shit than, like, literally omitting key details of Joe Rogan's fascinating media career and his ideological shapings that turned into ideological trappings, as a matter of fact, as his career progressed. Can't fucking be like uh, I'm a journalist while simultaneously making a YouTube video that is devoid of, like, any of the fucking journalism with the exception of, like, the peak of the peak where you're like, well, Alex Jones did lose a billion dollar defamation suit to the Sandy Hook families. I'm a journalist. I did my journalism. Are you fucking joking? That's the one time you did your journalism? You don't have to be a fucking journalist to know that Alex Jones is a charlatan who absolutely defamed and lied about the Sandy Hook situation and the fucking parents. Why are you making it seem like you want a fucking Pulitzer for pulling that shit up? What the fuck? Guys, I had a revelation. Alex Jones lost a defamation suit. I'm a journalist. That's why I know this. You are not. You dumb simpleton. You are not a journalist, so you don't know. You dumb simpletons at home. You don't know this. I'm a journalist, though. I'll tell you. You know, I pulled it up. I pulled that shit up as a journalist and figured out that Alex Jones was lying about what he said on the Joe Rogan experience. But he almost got me there. He almost got me. But thank God, there was a massively popular defamation suit that was historic, record-breaking uh, award. Uh, were, awards were given as a consequence of Alex Jones's defamation and lies about Sandy Hook. Thank God for being a jur Thank God for Johnny being a journalist, dude. He pulled that shit up. <laughs> hey, I, I, what the fuck? I read the news and watch you. I'm a journalist just like Johnny is. Yeah, just like I am. Everyone in the chat and myself, we're all journalists here because we knew that Alex Jones did engage in defamation. You know what I mean? <laughs> Bunch of journalists, all of us, all of us, 27,000 journalists in here. Each individual journal is about to see the top of the hour ad break, unless you're subscribed, okay? Subscribe for more journalism to my journal. Fuck. I'm so disappointed, dude. I fucking make memes about Johnny Harris, but, like, ultimately, I do like his content. I watch it all the time. This is the most, this is the single most disappointing. This is more disappointing than his, like, like, I expect him. Okay, here's the three-minute ad break. I don't even care. I fucking, yeah, I gave you a bad segue. Shut the fuck up. I expect him to obviously, I expect him to obviously have pro-American State Department propaganda whenever he talks about American foreign policy, the history of American foreign policy, history of coups, blah, 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 okay? I expect that. I expect that from everyone. I, that's not going to immediately make me write someone off, okay? Because I know that not everyone is is equipped with the immortal science of Marxist Leninism or dialectical materialism when they're operating or historical materialism when they're operating on like uh, uh, historical analysis. Okay, I know that, but when I see something like this, it goes beyond the pale. He has officially moved beyond the "I'm just a liberal who does have some good videos and makes really good map porn" to like I am very deliberately either demonstrating how naive I am, like laughably naive, okay? Or I am 
absolutely grifting here to fucking get on the Joe Rogan experience. Talking about Joe as a journalist, saying that he should have made research before having someone on like Alex. My friend, are you crazy? Joe Rogan has known Alex Jones for longer than he's known most people, okay? He's been a fan of Alex Jones, just like I have been a fan of Alex Jones. Joe Rogan has known about Alex Jones since the fucking public access days, where Alex Jones was uh, a, a relatively well-known, but still hyper-niche conspiracy theorist that was also prominently featured on a Scanner Darkly, for example, like numerous movies. Because Alex Jones, for all of his faults, is a brilliant entertainer. Alex Jones is a charlatan. Alex Jones is a dangerous man. But he is 100% an incredible entertainer, okay? He is. I've said this many times over. Yeah, he was in most, he was in a lot of Richard Linklater movies. I can see Alex Jones for the entertainment factor, okay? As a matter of fact, I was in a lot. I, I Alex Jones was was heavily featured on my stream in the early days. He was literally a, a alert back when I had alerts pop up. You would hear Alex Jones's voice throughout the entire fucking broadcast. Okay, he is a very entertaining guy. He's crazy. Okay, problem is we as a society are not ready to be entertained by him. We unfortunately are too fucking brain broken and believe the psychotic shit that he's saying. Now, having said that, you don't need to be a fucking journalist to know that Alex Jones is, is has absolutely engaged in dangerous conspiracy theories. Oh my God, I'm losing my mind. I'm not sure I would have gone and done this. I'm not sure I would have gone and reviewed all of the facts and wrestled with them in my mind, especially not after listening to two and a half hours of Alex Jones talking. I think the idea of trusting your viewer to go fact check everything you say is irresponsible and naive. I spend every day of my life making sure that the things I tell you are factually accurate. If I get something wrong, it's a cardinal sin. In a world of algorithms and misinformation and Russian bots, it becomes nearly impossible to fact check everything you see, which is why we rely on trusted voices to help us navigate the information out there, to help us navigate what is real and what is not. So instead, Alex Jones, a man who makes money off lies, gets to tell his side of the story. And what does he do with his time? Surprise, he lies. The amount of Sandy Hook coverage against me has been so insane and so huge because it's supposed to be the first domino that once I'm taken down, then all the dominoes fall. He tells a story about how this was all one big conspiracy to take. Yeah, where's the fucking Mr. Journalism fact check on like the metric ton of like psychotic conspiracy ramblings revolving around COVID from Joe Rogan, okay? What's going on there? Journalist guy, please do some journalism on the fucking ivermectin shit. Where is that? Where is the metric ton of journalism from, uh, I don't know, where, where is the modicum of journalism for, for all of the times that Ale, uh, uh, Joe Rogan has talked about, like, fucking trans people and anti-trans screeds? Please, explain to me where the journalism is. Journalism, man, what is happening? All of the people that are openly white supremacists that Joe Rogan has offered a platform to. Like... The only issue you have with Joe Rogan is that he, like, let Alex Jones on, but you were a little baby and you didn't do the fact check. But, you know, Johnny Harris is here because he's the fucking big-brained journalist. He's the big-brained, alpha-brained journalist. That's why he did the fact checking. You don't need to be a fucking journalist to know Alex Jones is a charlatan. Is it me or is Assange just unnecessarily hating here? This is absolutely the worst fucking video I've ever seen from Johnny Harris. It is an issue that I know very well. It is an issue that I have, uh, have, have talked about for years and years and years and years. I have been a fan of Joe Rogan. I've been a critic, uh, I've been a critic of Joe Rogan. The fact that like he would put this video out there uh, without mentioning any of those things comes across like a, a, a lie by omission. You know what I mean? I do not... I do not want Johnny Harris to have the same fucking feelings that I do about Joe Rogan. I do not expect that. But I, at least, would expect him to do his fucking due diligence because I do think Johnny Harris was a journalist at a certain point. Johnny Harris is at least a relatively smart person. Uh, it's just, like, shocking to me that he would write this 
And it makes me feel like he only wrote this either A, because he is the most naive person and he just like watched too much Joe Rogan until he gaslit himself into believing that Joe Rogan is this like honest actor who is just, uh, you know, who contains multitudes or because he's just grifting his way into uh, more YouTube mainstream prominence. And you can't do that without like, without clearing the Joe Rogan hurdle. You gotta, you gotta pay the big dogs their respect. And Joe Rogan is still a big dog in the field. Okay, he wants to go on the show, maybe. He even mentioned Milo Yiannopoulos by name, but didn't say he was a guest on JRE. Yeah, like, what the fuck is going on? Take him down. Now, of course, there is more nuance to this conversation as usual. Rogan does push back a few times. I don't think... Steven Crowder talked about you on his channel. I edited and put it on YouTube for you. This is a poop sock. I'm not watching this. This is literally a fucking poop sock from 2021. Okay? You just changed this poop sock... Uh, you just change the title of the poop sock to Stephen Crowder response to Hassan Piker. It's from 14th of April, 2021. Okay. I'm going to preemptively give you a one hour uh, ban. Take one hour off. I think that's, I, I think the majority of them are angry because the narrative has been that you're sending people to these Sandy Hook families host, homes. But I guess I'm wondering why, why is this the person that you want on your show, Joe? You're a curious, open-minded guy. And you've decided that this guy, this guy's voice, is who deserves your megaphone to 11 million people. And this doesn't even get to the other hours that Jones has on Rogan's show, where he outlines his theories on genetics and race. Native Americans, you can mind control really fast. Hmm, why is that? Well, it's like Vietnam. So Asians are about the most fearless killers there are. You're like, yeah, Native Americans, they're the, they're the best out there. They can do mind use. Native Americans are the easiest to do mind reading to because you know, they're like one unit and the Asians, they're, it's just like so yeah, bro. Listen, brother, Joe's going to watch the video and go, Alex Jones, I've known him for 20 years. Fuck you. Who are you? You you seem like a liberal and gay, probably. I'm not having you on the show. <laughs> Sorry, Johnny. Crazy. Oh, and this clip has less nuance. Like, if you listen to the whole thing, you're actually just watching Alex Jones talking not- You're like, what the fuck is this gay libtard saying about me? Alex Jones, I've known him for 20 years. He's a good man. Fuck you. Stop about totally bullshit theories on race and genetics. And Joe is just sitting there nodding his head. Native Americans so are gung-ho and they're tough and they're ready to fight. And I'm, you know, I'm part Native American, only like 6% Comanche and, you know, uh, Texas. And just that little bit makes me wild. No, they're not breaking any laws. This is their right. But what the f This isn't exploring both sides. This How you could literally cut this entire conversation about Joe Rogan. Not just Alex Jones, but about the things that Joe Rogan truly firmly believes and will advocate for. What the fuck? You could cut this video about every single right-wing guest that Joe Rogan has had on. It shouldn't take for the most famous conspiracy theorist who is literally a defamation uh, trial loser for you to go, wow, I can't believe Joe Rogan is like not doing both sides here. It's really fucked up, kind of damaging. Also, you can't unpack criticisms that you have for Joe Rogan by hiding them, by hiding them under criticisms of Alex Jones. That's what he's doing, by the way. That's what this cowardly man is doing. You can say all of this about Joe Rogan. He doesn't want to say it about Joe Rogan. He doesn't want to say it about Matt Walsh either, either, which is another person that Joe Rogan had on. Okay? Yeah, he ain't trying to go on Alex Jones' show, so he's like, Joe Rogan is great. I love him. He's curious. He's intellectually honest. He just wants to have a good conversation. But this Alex Jones guy. Guys, I'm a journalist. I found out that Alex Jones lost a defamation suit because of his harassment campaign against the families of Sandy Hook victims. Did you guys know that? Thank God that I'm a big journalist who, who uncovered this, un, this deep truth that Joe Rogan somehow did not have access to. Joe Rogan, quite irresponsible, sir. Please think clearly, clearly next time you make such a, such a decision. I mean, wow. This isn't nuanced conversation. This is pretend information framed as rigorous discussion, echoing ideas and thought processes that have been used for centuries to divide and demean people. This isn't balanced conversation. It's faulty logic and factlessness disguised as discourse. I have no respect for it. And listen, Joe Rogan wouldn't disagree with me fully on this. He knows that putting people on his show helps them, helps their ideas. 
when you were paused at 11, I thought you were being a little unfair. Now I'm pissed too. There is no way you come out of this video if you know what I know about Joe Rogan, if you know what I know about this space, even a little bit of this, okay? If you've watched actual Joe Rogan podcasts, okay? Whether on the stream or whether on your own, and you watch this video, there is 0% chance you're going to come out of this going, yeah, that's right. This, this Johnny Harris guy, he's doing a really good job with these critiques. There's no fucking way. This is like a reverse Sunny V2 video or a Sunny V2 video on Joe Rogan. <laughs> ideas. And I'm, by the way, I'm not a Trump supporter in any way, shape, or form. I've had the opportunity to have him on my show more than once. I've said no every time. I don't want to help him. This isn't the public square. This isn't a personal conversation between friends sharing ideas. This is a powerful man who commands the attention of millions of people. He has decisions on who he gives his megaphone to and who he does not and what facts he decides to challenge and which he does not. Okay, wait, but I'm not done. There's nuance to my critique, which is that sometimes letting people with ideas that I find reprehensible talk is actually really good. Most of Joe Rogan's guests are not Alex Jones. They're honest. Wait, these are the reprehensible people that he had on? Edward fucking Snowden? Is actually really good. Most of Joe Rogan's guests are not <laughs> Alex Jones. They're honestly interesting, no. stimulating conversations with I'm a kidding. lot of really I'm interesting kidding. I'm kidding. And even the ones I disagree with, there is so much value in letting them talk. Like I listened to this two hour conversation with Candace Owens, a political pundit who I deeply disagree with. I mean, she's called Trump the savior of Western civilization. She's called Black Lives Matter a bunch of whiny toddlers pretending to be oppressed for attention. I deeply disagree with this. These are, again, like purely aesthetic disagreements. Candace Owens is a white supremacist. Candace Owens cut a fucking documentary. You're a journalist, Johnny. Your disagreements on Candace Owens shouldn't just be because she said BLM is a bunch of toddlers. She literally cut a documentary creating conspiracy theories surrounding George Floyd's execution. Okay? She lied, made a documentary on the mother fucking Daily Wire dime highlighting just so many conspiracy theories about George Floyd. She said Hitler wanted to make Germany great. She said that. Okay? What is going on? This woman. After listening to the show with Candace Owens, I still deeply disagree with Candace Owens. In fact, I found more reasons to reject her approach to politics and facts. Yeah, I really needed to hear Candace Owens on the Joe Rogan experience for like an unfiltered two hour conversation for me to be like, you know, I'm glad I came out of that disagreeing with her even further. What are you saying? Candace Owens and Alex Jones are no different than one another. The only difference is Candace Owens hasn't lost a billion dollar defamation suit. Is that all you need? Mr. Journalist man? What are you saying? What is happening? No, what is actually happening? Like, so it's fine when Joe Rogan has Alex... It's not fine when Joe Rogan has Alex Jones on. But like Candace Owens, you know, this just... Simple disagreement I have with her. <laughs> what is happening? You just said it earlier. There is no difference between Candace Owens and Alex Jones, okay? The only difference is... Candace Owens' conspiracy theories, unfortunately, are more acceptable than Alex Jones' conspiracy theories that take it way too fucking far. What are you saying? What is the nuance there? And by the way, I'm not even saying don't have Candace Owens on. Don't talk to Candace Owens. But if you're going to fucking talk to Candace Owens, you better come with all of the facts. Just like you said about the Alex Jones thing. Okay. So let's say we all agree that Paris global agreement. warming is real. I mm -hmm. don't believe it's real. Okay. So I can't but why, sit here. But, but here's I the can't, question. I can't but why have a belief? What do you mean? Why have a belief as to whether or not global warming is real or not real? Because if I just, I just find that when things, it, you don't you're understand correct. the science. You are correct. But crucially, suddenly what I couldn't do was hate her. Like was so easy before. It's really hard to hate someone 
when you listen to them speak. I received some voicemail messages from about four kids and that like, you know, the language was, it was pretty strong. Nah, I'm done. I'm done. Liberalism is over. Honestly, fucking J.D. Pond, permanent first world genocide. I think that China is overtaking and fuck it. I'm going to die in the process, but it's okay. You know what I mean? I'm tapped out. I'm tapped out. This is peak liberalism, okay? It's over. It's done. There is no value to the fucking discourse. There is no value to the ideas that are represented. There's no critical thinking. It's just, is the interlocutor maintaining a fucking semblance of civility and humanity? These people will let you do anything. They will be on board with anything. I have never... Oh my God, I'm losing it. It's quite literally, let me tell you something. This is straight up the thing that a lot of people say about Donald Trump. If Donald Trump was like more palatable, okay, more aesthetically pleasing, he would be the most popular president of all time, okay? Like if Donald Trump was able to do Donald Trump shit, but wasn't like a charlatan who just kept saying Mexicans are rapists, everyone would be like, what's the problem? I don't get it. He's defending the country's borders from... Uh, foreign invasions, uh, hello? It's done. It's done. It, it's so done. It's so over. We are so fucking doomed, dude. This is what liberalism has brought us, okay? It, it's literally like, it, it's fine. As long as you're doing it, you can do fascism as long as you're doing it with a fucking smile and I will see your humanity and I will say to myself, look at how open-minded I am that I'm allowing you to say things I disagree with. Not Alex Jones, though. Not Alex Jones, because he, he took it too far. He lost a defamation suit. I'm a journalist. I know that he lost a defamation suit against the Sandy Hook parents. I only know that because I'm a journalist. I'm not so much of a journalist that I, like, investigated the background of Candace Owens to figure out if, if she had done similar things to Alex Jones. Because, like, her conspiracy theories that they revolve around Black Lives Matter, they revolve around George Floyd. So... You know, that's like, there's, it's just fine. That's fine. It's okay. I'm a journalist. Fuck. Strong. It was like, we're going to tar and feather your family. Um, we're going to put a bull in the back of your head. Like we did to Martin Luther King. Like, you know, N-word, N-word, N-word. You, like, none of what she said there is real, for the record. I don't even believe that, that what they're saying there is real. What you conveniently is have to see them as a real human with feelings and thoughts and ideas and it becomes a lot harder to just put them into a bucket as someone I should hate. Which of course, as we all know, is a huge thing that we've lost in our world of echo chambers, where we only hear from people that we agree with. And when we do hear from people we disagree with, it's often framed in an outrageous clickbaity article linked on Twitter entitled, Watch the- You worked for Vox.com! That's where you got your licks in! You won an Emmy! You are still that person! Fuck! Oh, I can't, I can't, I can't, I'm, I'm, I've never, I haven't been this trigger watching a fucking YouTube video in so long. Oh my God. I want to go back to a time when I never watched this video. I am permanently damaged from this video. I am scarred from this video. Oh my God. The senator that you agree with destroy the person you disagree with and reinforce your views that they are a monster and that you are justified in hating them. Dog, what the fuck are you saying? One, you contribute to this cycle all the fucking time. Two, Joe Rogan contributes to this. Hello? What are we doing here? Go on TikTok, search Joe Rogan and, and Adam Conover to see the thousands of TikToks that have been cultivated off of Joe Rogan destroys trans a defender, freak, soft, petty liberal. What the fuck? This is making me lose my fucking mind. This is such, like, shitty media commentary. Oh, my God. Everyone in the media just, like, wants to clip chimp you. Yeah, it's true, dumbass. I know. I, I, everyone does it to me all the fucking time. I know. I know. But beyond that... Stop being so fucking intellectually lazy and look into some of the fucking guests that Joe Rogan is on and do some journalism to figure out what the real damaging aspect of Joe Rogan having them on in an uninterrupted uh, capacity to show their humanity is, is why that's bad, why that has a, a damage, why that does damage to the quote-unquote discourse. What the fuck? 
How are you going to make a final note that, like, this caused you to sympathize with Candace fucking Owens beyond the clickbaity headlines and shit? Like, all you're doing is saying, I, Johnny Harris, okay, ex-Mormon, BYU guy, I did an internship at NATO, I, Johnny Harris, in spite of all of my traditional, uh, all of my education, all the critical thinking that I have, like, portrayed to you, that I've signaled to you that I'm a smart guy and a well-read liberal, was fucking duped by the Joe Rogan experience like I'm a fucking divorced 45-year-old cop who does BJJ because Joe Rogan talked about it. You literally cut a 35-minute video talking about how hard you got owned and duped like a rube, a mark, a sucker by a guy who calls himself a fucking ape. A dedicated COVID conspiracist who has had every conspiracy theorist on COVID on his fucking show. Every single one. Every single JRE in 2021 had COVID misinformation and anti-trans discussions. Every single one. Yeah. What happened? Where's the team? Does he have, doesn't he have a team of people? This is how Lib's midwife fascism, they fight it only in a hypocritical and insincere way. They cannot see these monsters as enemies without exaggerated form. Okay, but liberals are now into COVID conspiracy theories. Now look at Matt Iglesias and Nate Silver. I don't look at them because they're fucking gross, okay? Don't ever tell me to look at Matt Iglesias and Nate Silver. This is how I knew Candace Owens before I listened to her speak for two hours. But now I see her as a person, a human who holds views that I see as objectively bad for people and our society. But I can't dehumanize her. Somebody started doing this prank call and shit on you, and was this... It was a, all in one night. It was all in one yeah, night. Yeah, it was like four voicemails. Was this tied to like a boyfriend no, or so a I, it's, girl I was jealous? I was at a boyfriend's house when I got the calls, and I just like put it aside because it was like blocked number. So I was like, right. I didn't think anything of it. And then like when I listened to it, like it was like some pretty horrific stuff. Like I definitely cried, you know, I was 17. Takeaway, and then we'll finish up this video which is that Joe Rogan models curiosity and openness, and this is valuable. It is rare and unique to watch a tough guy, fighter, TV host, dirty comedian with a microphone admit that he's wrong. Here's the thing. These are not like planned statements. Let's be real clear. I don't have an off-air and on-air voice. I don't. No. I have me. This, this is, is it. You typically don't see stuff like this. Do I get things wrong? Absolutely. I get things wrong, but I try to correct them. And when it comes to powerful... That video that he just posted is literally from when he got COVID, which was noticeably devoid from the entire video altogether. That is the famous Joe Rogan COVID video, the kitchen sink video, which was noticeably absent from Johnny Harris's criticism when he talked about how open-minded Joe Rogan is. Whew. I'm dying. 2020 and 2021 don't exist. Nobody wants to think about it, except Joe Rogan still holds on to the COVID conspiracy shit like a psychopath. Most people don't want to think about COVID. Joe Rogan still does. Still brings it up. <clears throat> this is actually the worst Johnny Harris video I've ever watched in my entire life. Don't you think these reactions like yours is why a lot of young people lean right now? Yes, my reaction to the Joe Rogan experience uh, essay YouTube that is devoid of any kind of facts is the reason why young people are turning right. Because young people are fucking stupid, okay? They see another guy yell like this on camera and they go, well, I have no critical, I have no critical thinking skills, okay? Let me tell you something. I'm a young guy. No critical thinking skills whatsoever. I just respond to stimuli. Listen, wine ape. All you're doing in that situation is admitting that there's nothing in here. It's just fucking hollow that you see a guy that you kind of like getting yelled at by a guy you don't like, and you go, let me not investigate any of this further. Let me not see if there's anything truthful happening here. Let me not read into these criticisms whatsoever. I like this guy a little bit. I don't like this guy. I'm reacting to shapes and colors because I'm a fucking wine ape. At the end of the day, I'm a fucking hollow-headed ape. 
Okay? That's what you're doing. And young people must be like me as well. Joe Rogan is the exact opposite of a model of curiosity and openness. Thank you. Exactly. He kept going down a path towards closed-mindedness. The, the old Joe Rogan was actually curious. And he was actually open-minded. Okay? <laughs> you yelled at a YouTuber. Now I'm, now I'm mad at minorities. Now I hate minorities. <laughs> you yelled about some YouTuber. He's basically saying people are pussies now and turn right because you're yelling. I know. I've heard this so many times. Listen, folks, be more courageous with your ideology. You don't have to constantly be like, I became a racist because people were yelling online. I became a racist because people were too soy. Just say you're a fucking racist with your chest, okay? You don't have to do this. You pushed me into the right bullshit. This isn't fucking 2015 anymore, okay? Oh. I hate this so much. It's like, huh, you're pushing me into the right. It's like, do you see what's going on on that other side? Really? Like, you have no backbone. You have no moral compass whatsoever. Like, why are you admitting that willingly? Why do you come in here and admit that willingly? Where you're like, I am a fucking hollowed out, skulled dumbass who has no moral compass, no backbone, no critical thinking skills whatsoever, and I'm just responding to stimuli, left and right. And now, your anger, your emotion, and how silly this fucking YouTube video is, from a guy who you have, like, respect for, okay? Covering a subject matter that you know a lot about, that he's doing in such a bad job, that, it, it, that he's doing in such a silly way that it makes you feel like maybe there's something else going on behind the scenes. That has made me really fall into the arms of uh, right-wingers, okay? I was always left-leaning and got here because of the Shapiro name drop and just loved how shamelessly you express yourself as, about, as opposed to other left-leaning content creators. He, he got nothing. He just said that and dipped out. Wait, do you feel the same way about Tim Dillon? To be fair, every other media outlet had COVID disinformation. At least Tim Dillon's fucking funny. You know what I mean? Joe Rogan has lost the plot. He's not even funny. Tim Dillon has his fucking moments. Wrong. Absolutely. I get things wrong, but I try to correct them. And when it comes to powerful men in this world, most of the loudest voices are the ones promoting a confident, macho, nightmare version of masculinity. Nobody would be tougher on ISIS than Donald Trump. And while I don't vibe with all of the ways that Joe expresses his manhood, I think he is a force for good in this department, in showing an eagerness to ask questions and an ability to change his mind. And yet, as I mentioned earlier, my critique is that I think he overuses this persona, this confident, curious persona of, I don't know anything, I'm not an expert. Like, if you say you disagree with me, I probably disagree with me too. Yeah. When I say something stupid, I'm not thinking about what I'm gonna say before I say it, I'm right. just saying it. To tacitly validate deceiving information and to give voice to opportunistic characters. And so in the end, I'm not really sure if this modeling of an open mind outweighs the proliferation of seductively fake facts and ideas, especially in a time where truth and facts are already scarce and under siege. And Bro, Joe Rogan is the biggest peddler of misinformation. What the fuck are you talking about? Like, what are we doing here? What, what is happening? Like, you did a fucking 31-minute blowjob on a glowjob on fucking Joseph Robinette Rogan and, like, your final message is, like, Joe Rogan is a beacon of prosperity at a time when, like, fucking truth is under attack? Like, what's happening? Democracy dies in the darkness? That's why, thank God for Joe Rogan, like, he's having the tough arguments that nobody else is having? Like, what's happening here? This is, how is this any different than any number of intellectual dark web cutouts that have come and gone?
and creating confusion for all of us. Dude, they're keeping, they have human animal hybrids. There's the, the freaking, I have been there when people that work for the Pentagon say that they, we go to the laboratory and we meet with the ambassador. We have to take higher and higher doses to meet with them. And they're giving. You know what's funny about this? Johnny Harris also believes in the COVID lab leak. So maybe him and Alex, not that far removed, you know? Maybe you should uh, reconsider your opinion on Alex Jones. COVID definitely leaked out of a lab, according to Johnny Harris, right? Isn't that what he said? Giving us technology and the technology worked. I don't even think it's clear that carbon dioxide is actually a problem, but we can leave that aside. They say that 80% that of kids who experience any sort of gender dysphoria as children grow out of it. This tension is not unique to Rogan. All media, all news outlets are subject to this seductive temptation to appeal to the worst parts of our nature. Rogan's version of it is unique because he and his show are unique. So for how much I disagree with some of his standards and fact-checking habits, I do take comfort in this guy's commitment to openness, to curiosity. Dude, Joe Rogan, it's so laughable to say Joe Rogan in 2023 is committed to openness and curiosity. I'm gonna fucking lose my mind. Dude, that is the exact opposite, brother. You have lost the plot. It is actually the exact opposite that is the problem joe rogan has created an echo chamber around him of dick riders and sycophants most of them right wing who are desperate to go on a show so they rarely ever fucking disagree with him okay that is not a commitment to openness if he was committed to being open and hearing a diverse body of information a diversity of opinion he would have genuinely he would have people that genuinely disagree with him and then he would listen to them when they go on the show like he wouldn't have like a doctor on who is his friend for a long ass time who is a fucking uh a doctor who believes in the efficacy of vaccines okay and then debate that doctor he would listen to the doctor in the same way that he listens to every fucking kook with a HTML 1995 website selling colloidal silver. But he doesn't offer that dignity and respect to the doctors that he disagrees with. He doesn't even have them on usually. Okay? There's a reason why every single one of these fucking Joe Rogan clips that he used, with some exceptions, are from a different era. They are from the pre-Austin Joe Rogan era. They are mostly pre-COVID. Okay? This is not a very well-crafted narrative. If you know anything about Joe Rogan, you know that this is not how Joe is anymore. There was a time and place when Joe Rogan did demonstrate a commitment to having a, a, a unique variety of diverse opinions represented on a show that he would just sit there and go, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. And that certainly had issues, okay? That certainly had issues because there was a lot of right-wingers who came in and did some fuck shit on there, okay? That Joe Rogan is gone. There is no commitment to openness. It's gone. Why don't you go on Joe Rogan? It's such a silly question that people ask me all the fucking time. Of course I would go on the Joe Rogan show. Joe Rogan will never have me on the Joe Rogan show, and I, it's fine. That's okay. Okay, it's his own fucking show. Where's that Duncan Trussell clip? Let's let I know some of you have that in here where Duncan Trussell talks to him about this. Okay? A very old friend of Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan is a powerful You'd never go on law. What are you what are you talking about? Of course I would go on the Joe Rogan show. What do you mean? Guys, like people have this uh a false understanding. Like, I, I will debate. It's just, I do not see value in debate if Listen, man. the debate itself is with, like, some random guy with ridiculous ideas that has no fucking platform. Okay? Look at how we treated Dr. Hotez pre and post pandemic. Was it Dr. Hotez? And I'm not into deals. All right, quit's going on right now. 
I don't want to hear your heaven deal. I don't want to hear your space deal. Yeah. I'm good. I'm good right here. Well, I mean, don't you ever, I mean, this, we, and this is another thing we tell, we've done these so many times. We, we're going to repeat, of course, but like, dude, one of the, I do worry about you sometimes, man, because it's like, I think you're going to get, I think it's finally going to happen. I think one of your fucking guests is going to come in here with a briefcase and he's going to show you something. And I don't know what it is. Like an alien piece of a spacecraft? I don't spacecraft. know what it is. I was hoping is. it was going to be Tom DeLong. I was hoping he had something. No, I think you're gonna you're you're accidentally gonna get access for some reason. I think somebody's gonna give you something or show you something, and you're and like I, I worry about you, man, because it's like yeah, because you've got like you now have a platform. Oh, here, time stand where Ben Shapiro and takes the reason I take of such, I really like not much offends me, man. But when people start attacking you, I do like I have to fight against my offense because i know you and so when people are fucking at arms against you i feel really depressed because i know you and i and you like you are one of the most progressive people i've ever met and so when you when people start falling upon you uh because you have like fucking nerds like ben shapiro remember chat this is like more than two years ago okay this is three years ago august 31st 2020 this is three fucking years ago remember before you yell and say he's dick riding, that is literally ahead of the game. This is pre-Ivermectin, Joe. This is middle of COVID, Joe. Okay? Middle of COVID, Joe. This is before he went to Texas. So, remember that. Uh, <laughs> Which, by the way, you shouldn't have that guy on anymore. Right? Why? He's a dork. Come on. But come on. Those conversations are important. I think what's beautiful about what you're doing is you're opening. I would not open up the, the, by the way, Ben Shapiro, underneath it all, I know that you and I would probably have fun. But I know that right now where you're at in your incarnation, you're a fucking dork. And the whole, you know what I mean? Like, he's a dork. He's a dork. But what's so confusing. He's a nice guy. But what's, that's what's confusing about him is because you like look, him you, a lot. You look at his, like, you look at him and you're like, he's all like beating up what's her face about the thing and that embarrassing thing. What? But, the, the the music video, he's like, and they oh, were doing fornication. <laughs> Did you see me and Ali Mikofsky talking about wet ass pussy? Oh, God. <laughs> it, like, it, like that thing Shapiro's do. It's so embarrassing, Joe. And I like, get it. that dude is like an embarrassment. But the, what I, I don't think what people admit when they look at Ben Shapiro is like, there's a piece of you that's like, I'd, I'd have fun with him. Like, it'd be fun to drink with him. He's probably cool. But he's like, right now. I, I don't think he drinks, but he's a nice guy. He's a, what, whatever it is, he's he a is. good person. I'm not bullshitting. I look again. I think our job right now is not to alienate. We have to like involve. And that's why I have him on. That's why, that's why I know you're doing it, Joe. He's an. I'm telling you right now, Ben Shapiro is a nice man. He's a nice man. I see him. I hug you him every be, time I see him, and I don't hug him to be fake. I hug him because I genuinely love that guy. I think he's a nice guy. Look, I think some of the stuff he. I can see where Duncan Trussell's coming from and thinking like Ben Shapiro deep down inside could be a fun guy to have a beer with because he has his moments. Have you ever heard Ben Shapiro talk about sports? He's actually quite knowledgeable, okay? There are moments of humanity that come out in Ben Shapiro's incredibly dorky fucking veneer. They slip out every now and then, okay? He is just a media demon, okay? I would say that more so about Ben Shapiro than I would about, like, even a fucking... Uh, definitely more than Matt Walsh. Even more so than Tim Pool. Like, there is something to Ben Shapiro that, uh, like, there is a, there is a likable dorkiness to him, no matter what. He's a fucking absolute psychopath with his politics, but he is significantly more human than Tim Pool, Matt Walsh, Steven Crowder. Okay? Do you understand? Now, you're going to say, oh, those guys are awful. Well, I just covered half of the fucking base of online Republican commentary here. Okay? So, remember that. Like, yeah, sure, I gave you three names, but, like, that's half of the fucking online commentary space. Anyway. <sighs> Whereas, yeah, Libs will listen to Ben because he checks those civility boxes you mentioned. The other guys do too in certain ways. Don't worry. 
They never go too far. They don't disrupt the the preordained, God-given capitalist hierarchy. That's what I mean when I talk about civility. They're like, they can always hide under the... Uh, Brett Cooper, absolutely, way more normal than Ben Shapiro. Come on. That's not even a question. He's horrid, but he's much smarter than the other people we mentioned. Exactly. So, there is that. Having said that, however, she's still he's still awful. Ben Shapiro is. Um. Anyway, let's continue with. He's uh, what propagating in his like philosophies is like legitimately deranged. Bro, he's wearing an outfit. It's a costume. It's not, I mean, he, Ben Shapiro could never take off the yarmulke, shave his head, tattoo his chest with an eagle, <laughs> right. wear a bikini. <laughs> He's got an outfit. Only a man in a mansion can specu uh, speculate on capitalism. I mean, you can do it too. I think that the problem is you've been so fucking laser focused on defending capitalism that you come to the one guy who you've heard uh, uh, speculate on it. And you choose to give me money to, to fucking criticize me for having a mansion. It's like, okay. You know, there's a million guys out there that live in much larger mansions that are defending capitalism. Go love them then, you know, instead of coming here and, and shitting. I have a car too. I just want... To but it's not his fault. I'm telling you, we all come from a different spot. We, if, if life is a race, it's not like everybody's on the same starting line. Like, people are on starting lines that are like a mile behind yeah. yours. They're so far away. They're all different. And they, it, here's the thing. Even if people are wrong about many things, or even, I'll explain this better. Even if you disagree with the way people feel about so many different things. Yeah. It doesn't mean you can't be their friend. It doesn't. And uh, I'm telling you, we got it wrong, that's so man. so sweet. Here's what's important. What's important is whoever that person is, they got to be sincere. Now, as soon as you feel like someone's a grifter, yeah. you got to cast them out. Right. you got to cast them that's out. Because cool. they got to figure that out on their own, and they got to apologize. That's cool, man. You got Listen, you can be wrong, but you have to be honest. And if you're just bullshitting... Then I can't hang out with you. Dude, hey, let me ask ben you. Ben Shapiro's not bullshitting. I don't think he's bullshitting. I he's such a liberal dude. He's like, this is like, this is your brain. He's not even, this is not a lib thing. This is more so like an internet thing. This is your brain on being on internet. You're not a capitalist. You're a charity. Yeah, I mean, that's true. That is true. Uh, I am. I am a charity. At the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break. And, uh other people that give charitable donations to others in the form of a gift sub will then no longer, uh, will help others to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour. Here's the three-minute ad right now. I'm saying it. Joe would be willing to defend Hitler if he came across sincere enough. That's the point. It, on the internet, the simple appearance the, the, the simple appearance of hypocrisy, if no such hypocrisy exists, makes you worse than a bad guy who is openly a bad guy. Okay? That's why I'm willing to bet there's plenty of people in the Joe Rogan fandom who don't even agree with Ben Shapiro, but like Ben Shapiro more than they fucking despise me because they think in their minds I'm hypocritical because socialism means poor. Okay? Do you get it? It's like... Socialism means poor. This guy is not poor, but he says he's a socialist. That's grifting. That's way worse than a guy who's open about uh, uh, being a bad guy, uh, having bad opinions, genuinely living out those values. Talked about this before. No matter what you do, if you advocate for things that other people have declared progressive or good, even if they personally disagree with those things, they're like, oh, you have to abide by... Uh, a, a standard that I place on you, not a standard that you placed upon yourself, but a standard that I believe and others like me believe that you should be living. You should be living an ascetic lifestyle because socialism is a poverty cult. I think that socialism is a poverty cult. That's what I believe. You know what I mean? 
So that's why you're a hypocrite. Anyway, yes, infinite tolerance leads to the extensions, uh, extension of uh, extinction of tolerance itself. Lazy Gains Gaming and not Christian F. Thank you for the five. Get the subs. So that doesn't make sense. Shabibo advocates for traditional male aspects, but looks and, and is built like a middle schooler. I know, but a lot of people that advocate for traditional male aspects also look like Ben and talk like Ben. So it probably makes them feel like they too can be a, a, a beacon of masculinity while simultaneously uh, uh, not looking the part, not fitting the same standards that they have placed upon others. Powerful man who changes his mind, who admits when he's wrong, which I think is a much needed counterbalance Let's in an increasingly video. polarized world. Okay. And sometimes the best way to combat bad speech is to let that speech play out and let good speech overwhelm it with logic and reason and, and a better argument. But if they admit that they're wrong, then they're also admitting that they have horribly disfigured and abused thousands, maybe millions of kids. How many people have had this done? Depends on what. I don't think we have exact numbers, but it's if we're talking about the drugs, it's, I mean, millions. It says over the last five years, there were at least 4,780 adolescents who started puberty blockers and had a prior gender dysphoria diagnosis. A million sounds great. Wow, he really owned Matt Walsh here, so I guess, like, uh, he's good. I guess he's good. Dude, he's, like, for a guy who says he hasn't watched a lot of Joe Rogan, he sure sounds like a dude who's, like, desperately trying to cling on to Joe Rogan is actually not that bad narrative. Joe Rogan, journalist extraordinaire. Yeah.